podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Network's 200 stations nationwide, Saturday, April 4th, 2020. This is episode 1683. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. I know you're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This episode of the Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by CashFly. Give your users the seamless online experience they want. Power your site or app with CashFly's CDN and be 30% faster than the competition. Learn more at twit.cashfly.com. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smartwatches, working from home, streaming church services or synagogue services or mosque services, uh, all the things that are a little different in our modern age. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the phone number. 888-827-5536. That's toll-free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada outside that area. Oh, yeah, you could still reach me, but you've got to, uh, you've got to use Skype out or something like that. Don't use Zoom! Oh! <laughs> the Zoom panic has begun. So let's see. I could, I could go through the whole litany of things Zoom has done wrong. This is the program everybody's using. It was really designed for business, and we've used it uh, in my business for some time, even though I have never been a fan. I'm a fan of how it works. It works really well, and that's why people use it. It's easy to understand. It just works. But even last year, there were issues with Zoom. The way Zoom installed, for instance, on a Macintosh uh, they put a, well, did a number of things that were not kosher for Passover. But uh, the worst thing was after you uninstalled Zoom, it kept a little web server, a web server running on your Macintosh at all times, which bad guys could then use to attack your system. When it was discovered, Zoom didn't respond very quickly. Apple actually had to push out a fix that removed the Zoom web server. I'm sure Apple was not happy about that. But Apple users, you could feel good. Apple's sticking up for you. I understand why Zoom did it. Zoom was a business product. They were focused on making it easy for un relatively unsophisticated users. Think about it. You know, uh, a lot of companies use Zoom for conference calls with potential clients for pitches, right? You don't want to make a potential client have to jump through hoops. You What you really don't want to have to do is make them install software and configure software before they can join the meeting. A client's going to say, well, if you're going to make me do that, forget it. You, you can pound sand. So Zoom was always designed to make it as easy as possible. Now, I'm not apologizing for Zoom, but I do understand uh, why it's the way it is. They wanted to, So that web server, for instance, made it so that uh, you just, even if you uninstalled Zoom, if you just clicked a Zoom link, you know how you get those, maybe you don't, but... The way it works is you start, you create a meeting and it sends out an invitation, puts it in the calendar. You can just click the link in the calendar and boom, you're in the conference. Magic. That's what, that's kind of what you, you want, right? If you're doing these sales calls, even if you didn't have the software installed, it would install it behind the scenes and open it up. So Zoom, I think, erred on the side of making this convenient, not considering the security consequences. Now, when they were apprised of this, they didn't act. So, you know, <laughs> there's a black mark right there. <sharp inhale> then lately, there's been issues like the Zoom iOS app uh, using a Facebook kit of tools was even if you weren't a Facebook user telling Facebook all about you. Eh, it's not so good. <laughs> Most recently, Zoom was routing calls through China. They say it's an accident. Uh <laughs> Zoom. Uh, I mean, there are privacy issues. There's a free tier of Zoom. You can do 40 minute calls for free. And uh, those, you know, they were looking at what you were doing and mining it for advertising information. All of these things, you know, <laughs> negative, bah, now. But people still use it. And I'm, you know, <laughs> my, 
my, my company still uses it. I'm trying to talk them out of it. I can't convince them, you know, because it's so easy and everybody has it and everybody knows it. And, you know, why not use Zoom? Oh, I forgot even to mention Zoom bombing. This is where, you know, you know there's a whole Discord channel. Discord is another product that uh, the youngs like to use. It's a chat product, does video calls. It's, you know, it's kind of like uh, Zoom for nerds, I guess, for gamers and stuff. And uh, there's a whole discourse channel of Zoom meetings you can, you can Zoom bomb. They think it's the funniest thing ever. And if you think back to when you were in high school, maybe you might have too. I don't know. But they don't understand. And honestly, what they're doing is awful. I have a friend who's in a 12-step program, goes to AA meetings. They, they have to do these meetings now via Zoom. And they're in a meeting, you know, having their fellowship. It's great. And some jerk comes in and starts really just appalling stuff. I can't say it on the radio. It's just awful. And it was very uh, upsetting and offensive and triggering and not good. And these kid, kids don't know, but nevertheless, it's appalling. Stop it. Knock it off. If you're one of those people, this is not good. Nazi slogans, racial epithets. It's just, you know, another reason not to use Zoom. Although, uh, to be fair, Zoom does have settings. It's just the default settings, because it's for business, are wide open. You can go into the settings and say, hey, don't let anybody join unless by invitation. The problem is an AA meeting is a good example. You need to make, you want to make those public. You don't want to make them hard to enter. You don't want to have to put up a password. I don't know if there's a fix for that. If a meeting's public, you can go into the Zoom settings and say only the host can can show you know his screen only the host you could there's settings you can lock it down a little bit better and i hope people are learning those settings if you google you know TechCrunch had a great article zoom bombing TechCrunch. You, you'll find the article how to how to protect your zoom meeting it does make me wonder though why are we using zoom there are many other choices uh, another thing zoom does badly and wrong is they say we are end-to-end -end encrypted private not so but it's the nature of the beast. They can't really be private. It can be encrypted as it's traveling over the Internet. But Zoom's servers have to be able to see the conversations in order to mix them and do all the, you know, highlight the speaker and all that. So they're not encrypted on Zoom's servers. So their, inter their use of a term end-to-end -end encryption, which means in, in a, my book and in the books of people who understand what E2E is, they're not doing. They're, you know, E2E means no one can see it except the parties in the conversation, and that's not the case. So it's not completely private. And if it's routing it through China, well, maybe that's even worse. There are other solutions out there. I'm just saying they're not as obvious and easy to use, and I can't convince my team. I've set up, there's a, there's a wonderful open source program called Jitsi, J-I-T-S-I. Every bit is easier to use a Zoom. In fact, I would say easier because there's no software install. It just works in a browser works best with Chrome. So if you get a link, you click the link, and you're in. And by the way, the links are better than the Zoom links because they're not long numbers and they're words. And it's easy to share them just on the phone. You can password protect them if you want. Um, and it works beautifully. And it's free, free, free. Just no charge at all. Jitsi. J-I-T-S-I dot org. In fact... And this is what I did for our company. You can, it's easy if you know what you're doing and if you happen to have a little, you know, ability in, uh, in, in the Linux world. It's a pretty, it's a two-step process to install your own Jitsi server. I'm running one on my little box at home. Then, it's then it is private. It's encrypted in transit. And yes, in order to do these conference calls, the server has to see the calls, but it's my server. I'm the only one seeing it. And I'm not seeing it, but uh, but for our team, this is true private uh, teleconferencing. I try to get my family to use it. <laughs> my son is in, you know, they're all at different places, and we wanted to have a little family get together yesterday. We tried it. My kids could do it. <laughs> my ex-wife couldn't figure it out. We had to go to Zoom. <sighs> face. I'm I'm putting my face in my palm right now, but I'm not touching it. I'm just hovering it. So. <laughs> Uh, and I can't, you know, I, we have our own, we have, we have our own server with the name of the company and we can make up meetings like, you know, sales meeting with 
Xerox as the name of the thing, so something very easy. You could even just say it, and they still won't use it. <laughs> so it's an interesting, it kind of says something about our, our, uh, our world in general, is that it's one of the reasons why people still buy Windows. Don't. Stop. Please. Stop. Stop the insanity. Stop buying Windows. It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. But everybody knows it. It's easy to buy a PC down at the Best Buy or the Costco. They've got them. They, they run Windows. Cheaper than a Mac. Please don't. <laughs> I know you will. Please don't use Zoom. I know you will. There are better alternatives. But go ahead and try to explain to somebody how to use Linux. <laughs> or Jitsi. No. They're actually easier. More reliable. Not as buggy. They don't send data to China. <laughs> Microsoft has said, oh, hey, you can use Skype. We've got Skype now. It's just like Zoom. Yeah, that's fine. That'd be better than Zoom. You know, you could trust Microsoft anyway, I guess. <laughs> it's a little frustrating for us nerds, geeks. Uh, you know, we we say, but there's a better way. See right over there. Uh, yeah, but every nobody got fired buying Windows. Yeah. All right. 8888-ASK-LEO. 888-827-5536. That's toll-free anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. Let's talk. we got a great website. Everything I say is up there. I'll put some links about Zoom bombing, how to avoid it. I'll put a link to Jitsi up there. Actually, it's not me. It's James DeRuvo, my scribe. He's writing as I speak. The website is free. It's open. No sign up. TechGuyLabs.com. So you don't have to write anything down. Just remember that. TechGuyLabs.com. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, it's a miracle. Kim Shafford should join me in my Jitsi. Sure. <laughs> join me in my Jitsi. It is even fun to say. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kimmy don't take no Shaffer. Somebody uh, said to me, you know what that means, don't you? What? Kimmy don't take no Shaffer. She oh. said that you're insulting her. I'm saying, no, I'm not insulting you. I'm saying you don't take no Shaffer. Right. That's good. <laughs> Kim Schaffer is the unbreakable phone angel. She is the real star of this show, Answers the Phones. Comes to work wearing no mask. <laughs> yeah. I chided you. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be wearing, ugh, for the first time, I'll wear one in the grocery store. Yeah, I really think that's a good idea. Um, Do you go to the grocery store? Yes, because I have parents in their 70s, so I am putting my life on the line yes. to get them food. Yeah, that's, that's what good. You do You're a as good a girl. Person. You're a good girl. <laughs> and just six feet away, wear your mask. Yeah. You don't have to wear gloves. That's silly. I have a pair in the car just in case, but I also have. In case of what? I don't are know. You're not doing surgery, are you? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm just saying the, the if you read up on the CDC's recommendations, the gloves don't do anything because they're no better than your hands, unless yeah. you have a cut on your yeah. hands or some open wound. But uh, if you the gloves still will pick up the virus, and if you touch your face, then you with the gloves, it's the same. They're not getting in through your skin; they're getting in through your eyes, nose, and mouth. Right. So that's what you have to protect. That's why a mask is helpful because it just protects a little bit more of your face. You can do a. You could be styling. You can have a scarf. <laughs> like Doctor Mom bra masks. <laughs> Okay, I don't recommend that. Although, they'd be very comfortable, wouldn't they? Extra padding. Is your face a D or a C? I don't know. Ex yeah. Yeah, it's the underwire that's, that keeps oh. the chin up. Yeah, that, um, you put that on the top. Actually, the, you know what? Nose. I never thought of that, but that probably would work. Yeah, probably. I guess anything. Anything is a little helpful. It's, yeah, that's the idea. It's, it's just, a little helpful. Yeah, it's that's a little exactly helpful. right. It's a and little it keeps helpful. you from touching your face. Yeah, that's one of the reasons they didn't want to recommend it because because people get you know they they touch. But see, if it covers your mouth and nose, at least you're not touching them. Right. Keep your hands away from your eyes. Now you're good. You're good to go. You can put on the goggles. 
oh, I saw somebody in their own sure. car with a pair of ski goggles and a mask on. I thought a that was idea. a bit extreme. You're Not in a bad your own idea. car. Well, Maybe. your car is a safe space, <laughs> unless you've had teenagers in there. No. You know, Uber drivers, I wonder what they're doing. I don't doing, think right? Uber drivers are driving right now. Oh. Because okay. nobody, where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? Nobody has a job. Where are you going to go? go? Bar. What's Stay the point? home. Yeah. Home's not so bad. Eh, it's boring. I hope you have a home. If you have yeah. a home, you know, and the problem is, of course, rent. the rent's due now, and that's a problem for a lot of people. And getting food's hard. They don't all have a nice daughter like Kimmy. Can I just tell you a feel-good story? Yes. My friend lives in an apartment complex owned by a very, very wealthy, famous person. And uh, his rent is waived until July 1st. Nice. Thank you, Charlton he, Heston. No, nope, it's really not that nice. person, but it's somebody else. Yeah. He, uh, That's really a good story. He, it should be. It, they were going to, at first, the landlord said um, half rent. Right. And five minutes later, he called back and said, I can't so and so decided yeah. no no rent yeah. until July 1st. If you can afford it. I understand a lot of landlords, that's their income too. Not, yeah, a, not know, everybody is this thing. guy though. I'll right. tell you off the air who he is. If you have but. a lot of money, <laughs> you know, and that's why Google and Facebook and Apple and I are, are paying their employees, you know, they're furloughed and all that stuff. Because the problem is a lot of small businesses, restaurants, salons, you know, it's tough. Yeah, and both of these people don't have the extra money. Uh, work at restaurants and they've both been shut so right so they don't have the rent they don't have any income we love you we love you stay safe stay healthy do the best you can and folks help your neighbors help your friends we all need to work together now this is a good time for us to show our best mm-hmm who should I talk to? I don't know if you have any time, but Libby <laughs> uh, has a question that you are intimately um, have experience with about the bidet toilet seats. <laughs> oh, I, I do. I don't know how you knew that, but I do. I've Hi. been to your house. Oh, okay. Hi, <laughs> Hi Libby. Hi. Uh, well, I thought since I can't buy toilet paper that it has... I've been thinking about the bidet toilet seat. and I love them. Now, oh, you do. And now I thought I had heard you at some point say that. So but here's the downside. Choices. It needs both a plumber and an electrician. Well, I have both. Oh, good. Because you have to, have, most of them require power. I, I can't think of why they wouldn't. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the easiest thing to do is, you know, bring, in fact, a lot of hotels in Europe and the Middle East have just little hoses Next to the toilet, so you could do your own. But the, I honestly, if you can afford, they're not cheap, but if you afford a bidet toilet seat, they start at a couple of hundred bucks to replace the seat to thousands of dollars for a whole new toilet. Uh, we have the Toto washlets, and they have a warm, you know, they plug in, so they have a warm seat, warm water. And yeah, you don't need to use any toilet paper. My For some reason, my wife uses still uses toilet paper. I'm not going to inquire, but um, I don't. And we have Orna Septic, so it's also better for the septic system. Wayfair is having a sale, according to Dr. Mom, of bidet attachments. So highly recommended, Libby. Okay. Highly. Great. Highly. <laughs> My wife, okay, so I, I have a friend who said, you got to get these, Leah. So I, got, I said, okay, honey, can we get one? She was very skeptical. Very skeptical. I got it. She said, why don't we have these in every bathroom? So we got another one for the kid. This, you know, and the guest bathroom has one now, too. So come on over, Libby. You can try it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Thank first you. time, you're welcome. The first time, it's a bit of a shock. Woo! After that, you look forward to it. That's all I'm going to say. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Coming up, Scott Wilkinson, home theater guru. This is a new one. The first time we've ever talked about toilets on the show. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! I didn't realize you'd used it. I I housed that at your house. I took care oh, of your animals. Why did I not remember that? That's I awesome. I don't expect you to remember everything. Thank you. No, I don't remember um, anything. No. That, isn't that, that was, great? That was a thrill. <laughs> it's, it's so great, isn't it? Yeah. Didn't I, you want to go to the bathroom more? <laughs> didn't want to leave. <laughs> oh, I love your house. Can I? It's funny because... Um, uh, for a while, we had uh, our Pilates trainer would come over and do a little Pilates classes for uh, for us, and she would use the bathroom. She never noticed we had the thing. She didn't. I, How I, could you not? I know notice? there's buttons and knobs and <laughs> dials, and she and she she didn't even notice the seat was warm. <laughs> That's the best part. I, oh yeah, and you sit down and a fan comes on. It goes. <laughs> it's kind of an elaborate thing. It is. I went to a. Uh 
restaurant in Yauntville. Um, I think everywhere and, should have it. And they had them. I went, oh, yeah. what a treat. Yeah, what a treat. <laughs> What a treat. It's all, thank you, Japan. <laughs> thank you, Japan. We don't have bird song or music or water running in ours. You know, it does some of the, in the, in the public toilets in Japan, sometimes they have sounds too uh. for privacy. I really, I, I have to say, I really like it. Are you going on a hip trip? I think it's, oh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, a little East Bay Grace Tower of <laughs> Power. <laughs> Introducing Scott Wilkinson. I'll tell you what is hip. This cat man, <laughs> our home theater geek, contributor to techhive.com. A lot of people watching TV these days. This is a good time to be a home theater uh, geek, I think. It's true. It's absolutely yeah. true. Yeah. Uh, and and I, thank, I thank you so much for allowing me to change my intro music. I, I was always a little strange. You know, with that other one, but Scott this one because you're a horn guy. You're a you're a I am a horn guy. guy. I've been playing Tower of Power music since college. Yeah, me too. And I love it. And uh, so, thank you, Lady you know, Laura. She dug deep into the stacks. You. I think she actually had to go down to the hall of the music library to find that one. <laughs> no, no, that's one of my favorite tunes of all time. And uh, you know, what is hip? That's what I'm here to tell you, man. What is hip in the world of home theater? Wide screens, surround sound, uh, everybody. Uh, Disney Plus just uh, put another movie, um, released it not in the theaters because who's going to the movies? But Nobody. on Disney Plus, um, mm -hmm. I, I think I feel like this is uh, this could be the beginning of the end for movie theaters. I hope not because I love movie theaters. I, but I agree with you, but uh, you know, there's already talk that some movie chains might in fact go under yeah. because of this. Yeah. Yeah, uh, which is really sad. I I think it's really sad, but um, you know, it's I think given the nature of this crisis, uh, there may be no way to save some chains. Um, yeah. AMC, mm -hmm. one of the biggest in the world, uh, is is struggling, and they're all struggling. But we did wonder. We thought this would happen years ago when people started getting really nice TVs and surround sound and. You know, everybody now, it used to be it was the province of the rich, the movie stars, the screening sure. room. But now sure. everybody uh, can have a nice home theater system. Yeah, it's true. It's, but it's not that super cheap, but it's a lot. It's not as expensive as you might think. And with $10 right. movie tickets, it doesn't take long. Well, sure. You take a family of four out to the movies. 80 to, bucks, you know, 90 bucks eight, right there. Yeah, plus the uh, concessions, the candy and the popcorn and whatever. Uh, yeah, that's going to cost you 100 a bucks plus, you know, every time you go. You do that once a month for a year, you could afford a very nice TV. That's right. And a sound That's bar right. and everything. Mm -hmm. But, you know, every technological advancement has predicted the demise yes. of the previous thing. And it never happened. This is different. Well, we didn't have COVID before. <laughs> well, we, yeah, you didn't have the theaters closing yeah, down. Yeah, this is you know this is the might be the impetus that pushes it over the edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah but you're but that's so. an astute point because when when TV came out, they said it would kill radio. Uh, when right. radio came out, they said it would kill newspapers. That's uh, right. When when a TV also they thought, well, that's it for movie theaters. None of that has happened. Or when movie theaters first came out, that's it for live theater. Right. You know. Right. None of it happened. They they all coexisted, and and I think reasonably so. But if you have to shut down the live theater, live theater I think will always exist. That'll come back. Mm -hmm. But movie theaters, um, because the fact that people have reasonably good alternative, uh, they they may not. Some of them may not come back. Except you know maybe the the boutique ones that serve food and. You know, well, become that's what a they got to do, right? That's yeah, what bookstores yeah, had to do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so what exactly. would you, what's the, what's the lowest price you could get a decent setup for? That's a good idea. A good question. Why don't you put that, you don't have to do it to this week, maybe next week. Talk about, look, if you're stuck at home, you want a, a, a decent TV, whether it's a Vizio or a TCL. TCL is pretty affordable. It is. It get is. Get a sound you're bar. Talking, yeah. You're, you're talking, okay, I can just do a quick one right now. You're, you're talking under a thousand bucks. Uh, for a TV, well under in the case of, T of TCL, um, you're talking a couple hundred bucks for a sound bar. I wouldn't use the TV's own onboard sound system uh, because it really generally sounds very bad. There are a few exceptions, but those are really expensive TVs. So if we're trying to save money here, uh, well under a thousand bucks for a TV, a TCL, a Vizio, um, 
couple hundred, 300 bucks for a sound bar, uh, a streaming box. I mean, the TV will have uh, streaming apps in it, so you don't need a streaming box. And it'll have Netflix and it'll have, you know, uh, maybe Amazon, depending on if you have Amazon Prime or not. But a lot of these channels are offering, you know, like 30 day free content in the midst of this crisis. And that was the other thing I wanted to mention here. Uh, Roku has got a bunch of free content for the 30 days. HBO is offering a bunch of free content for, for a month at least. So there's a lot of free content out there right now that the companies are saying, you know, we, people are stuck at home. We, we're we're going to help by offering them, you know, some content to watch for free and, and a lot of it. Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting time. I mean, at least we have some TV we can watch. You yeah, know, you have a show you like, you want to recommend? I think we should do this every week too. This is one of the things oh. people do now on these Zoom meetings: is what are you watching? What's good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's true. Well, to tell you the truth, I'm just finishing up. Uh, now, this isn't free, unfortunately. I'm just finishing up uh, Star Trek Picard. How do you like that? I like it. It is free. I, I believe that they're oh, streaming. Oh, is it now? I think uh, I read that the that because uh, it, it was you had to buy uh, CBS, you had to buy All, CBS Access. All Access. Yeah, right, exactly. And I think that CBS All Access now that it's come to the end of the line is offering probably because of COVID. They're offering a, a a way to watch it free. I'll have to. Oh, that's great. I like it. I, I HBO's think it's put good. up the Sopranos, a bunch of stuff for free. Bunch of stuff. Yeah, that's right. Amazon is is offering a bunch of free streaming, free kids streaming kid shows um yeah hbo i was just looking at hbo uh and what they were offering and they were offering a bunch of stuff let's see here um the sopranos veep the wire uh, love the wire <laughs> love sopranos love veep those are three of hbo's best shows Great did shows. they put game of thrones up for free I don't see it in the list. No. no, that's too much to ask. You know why they haven't yet sold the DVDs and everything? They're gonna they're gonna go for all of that. Yeah, I guess that's true. I mean, we've also got uh, yeah, and, and HBO is available on a wide variety of platforms: uh, Apple, Comcast, Hulu, Roku, Verizon. So uh, HBO shared to celebrate the final episode of Picard a coupon code. I'll give it out right now. Gift. Gives you a free month of CBS All Access. Oh man, so, that's great! Yeah, so that's great. I'm sure there's a lot more on CBS too. Uh, see that that's worth watching. I right, think. Right. So, um, you know what? The other thing on Picard, uh, they it, it, with each episode of Picard, there's also a half hour episode called The Ready Room, which is uh, hosted by Will Wheaton. Oh, I love it. That's the new <laughs> thing, right? Is dissect the show in great exactly obsessive with some of the detail. Yes, with some of the stars of the show. Yeah, so yeah. one week it'll be uh, one week when uh, uh, Jonathan Frakes and and um, Brent Spiner were on. They had he had them on. They were talking about the show. Jerry Ryan. I'm just about to watch that episode. I think that maybe Chris Hardwick started this with The Walking Dead because they used to have The Walking Dead, uh, and then they would have Talking Dead right after it <laughs> with, with Chris Hardwick, which is I think very cool. Uh, so well, this is this is cool. this is how nerds are, you know. We're obsessive, and yeah. so we dissect obsessively. What happened? What does that mean? What's the significance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. In fact, Will Wheaton says, "Hello, nerds!" At the beginning <laughs> yeah. of each episode. Yep. There you go. <laughs> you know what? Now we're all nerds. Now, baby, we're all yep. we're all geeks. Scott Wilkinson. We're all geeks he's the home theater geek, and he joins us every week to home theater geek out. You'll find him at techhive.com. Mm. And, of course, right here on uh, on the show. Scott, stay well, stay healthy. Wear that. <clears throat> it's a little harder for you. you got the Santa beard. Uh, I know. You're going to have to get a, a, a balaclava helmet or something and put it over <laughs> the whole head region. But do stay That's healthy. Right. Leo Thanks. Laporte, the tech guy. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888, ask Leo, the phone number. On we go with the show. Don in Dana Point. Hello, Don, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hello. Thank you for taking my call. I oh, have, that was uh, Bill Withers. I apologize. The, I want to fix that. I thought it was Dr. John. Sorry, Lady Laura. That's Bill Withers. The late Bill Withers passed away at the age of 81. And what a great guy. I was. I completely missed that song. 
You're right. Am I right, Lady Laura? You are. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry. That was a that that's lovely day, right? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Artist. Yeah. Yeah. Use me. Use me. Okay. Sorry. Anyway, I apologize. And, doc, and uh, uh, Dr. John passed away last year, but uh, Bill Withers this year. So we're, we miss them both. We miss them both. Thank you, chat room, for guess, setting me straight. Now, I'm sorry, Don. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. I have a, a number of very short things to, to tell you. My first one is um, I would like to suggest uh, people look into a company called Pluggable. Pluggable.com. I've been using their products for years. They, I used to use Belkin before their quality went down when they sold out uh, to another company. I found that their super speed hub for four ports and their eight port USB three hubs are just great. All of the products I've ever gotten from them just work. And their technical support is really good. Pluggable. I am not familiar with them. But yeah, I will, I, uh, I will try some stuff from them. I like the uh, list of things. They have lots of docs and things like that. Yes, I have never had a bad product from them. When I've had issues, they have been Johnny on the spot to help me. And if there has been a problem, they have replaced stuff immediately. Nice. Yeah, that's the most important thing. Most of these companies, like Belkin, I'm not sure about Pluggable. Most of these other companies, um, did they're just putting slapping a brand on a Chinese manufactured good, which is why. You can order almost exactly the same piece of hardware from a variety of companies. It's really the service that matters. Well, and the original Belkin was a family product. and Yeah, they, but not anymore. <laughs> and that, that uh, changed. Yeah. And was, uh, yeah. second, second one is uh, on the CBS All Access with uh, Picard. The, we were watching it on an iPad, and they have a – we found out the hard way. They said AirPlay is not – usable on Ugh. the free so you have to watch it on the laptop Are yeah they? companies do things like that at least they gave it away but uh yeah it's too bad that they don't give it away fully third thing uh <laughs> i noticed on zoom that i'm seeing a lot of situations where they have choruses and orchestras and the like and there's there's no latency issues i don't know why that's an issue for another point but i wanted to bring that up uh Third thing, um, I have an idea pad, Flex 5. The keypad keys are becoming inoperative. Uh, before I sent it to uh, Lenovo, I copied the D drive to external hard drive. Is that sufficient for a backup? I can't, since iDrive doesn't have the option to send a hard drive in, there's not enough time to do an online backup. Yeah, there's something we uh, I don't talk about enough, and I should mention it. The problem with an online backup is... It takes a, you. It's your bandwidth, so you got to upload, and no online backup is going to use all of your bandwidth because that would take you offline for everything else you're doing. So they're usually very gentle. Um, there's actually a technical term, nice. <laughs> Literally, that's what it's called. They're nice, and as a result, uh, it takes a while. It could take weeks. Sometimes, depending on how much data you don't want to. That's another reason not to use too much data in your online backup because you're going to have to upload it all. Once it's uploaded, it's very quick because it's only uploading changes after that. But that first My upload is a problem, and you're right. Some services would allow you to send them a hard drive. I guess iDrive is not one of them. Right. My question is, did the copying the D drive to the external drive, is, is that sufficient? Yeah. That's a local copy, and I, I think you should always do that too. So the on, uh, online backup is not the only backup you should have a local backup as well for the reasons you just mentioned. It's quick to get it there, but it's also quick to get it back. You don't have to download your missing files. So I always encourage doing both. Yeah, it's a one, two, three. Yes, exactly. Three copies of your data, the original and two backups, or three backups if you don't have the original anymore. Two different kinds of media, or I would say two different styles, and one of them should be off-site. But I'll add, one of them should be local, absolutely. In fact, in, uh, in, in businesses, they call it uh, offline, online, and nearline backups. They have backups to all three. Offline is good for ransomware because it's not being, you know, it's not hot, so you can't, the ransomware can't encrypt it. Nearline is relatively quick to get to. Maybe it's a backup drive in your closet, but not as fast as online, which is always accessible. The negative on online is ransomware will encrypt it as well. 
bad things will happen to it as well. That's why online is fast, but not your only solution. You want online, near line, and offline. Okay, last two questions, because I know you're short on time. Uh, I want to get a replacement Y40 that's a 17-inch with a 10 key, three USB, three ports. Uh, comments on that? Say that again. What do you want to get, a Y40? No. The, Lo the Lo Lenovo. Oh, the Yoga. Is that a right. Yoga? Uh, Y40, 17-inch tank with a 10 key on the keyboard. Yeah, that's a big <laughs> device. <laughs> yeah. A desktop replacement. Yeah, okay. If that's what you're looking for, you you bet. Don't expect to you know, get much battery life from those devices. On the other hand, you have such a nice big screen. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that that's not a bad, uh, not a bad choice. Just remember, it's very heavy. Battery life's going to be bad, but it's, a, it's as you say, we used to call them desktop replacements. I don't know if people are looking to, <laughs> to do that anymore. But yeah, that's, those are, I'm, I'm a fan of the Lenovo's great keyboards. You'll notice with the 10 key, if this bothers me, might not bother you. Maybe I'm a little too OCD. The, the 10 key means that you can't center the trackpad. The trackpad's centered under the keyboard, and then there's more to the right. So it always looks a little off-balanced to me. But if that doesn't bother you, those are okay. great. Okay, last question. Yes. I will, I'm going to be having a video chat with my doctor about a 30-minute a uh, video chat. Is there a way to record that discussion for later playback? It totally depends on what service you're using to do it. Most services, uh, Zoom has a way of recording. Uh, Skype has a way of recording. Most services will have built into it the ability to record. I recorded my what my daughter years ago was an uh, uh, exchange student in uh, France, and I missed her terribly. I set her up with a Skype account, one of those accounts that lets you call uh, local numbers and international numbers. I think it was 90 bucks a year at the time. And so we talked a lot on Skype, which was great. I got face-to-face -face conversations with her. And I recorded every one of them. And I'm so glad I did because I now have <clears throat> a recording of my daughter in high school as an exchange student in France. So it's a nice memory to have. So absolutely, you can record it. Remember the rules. Uh, I don't, you know, this is interesting. I would suspect they apply to... Skype calls as much as they do to phone calls. Your state, each state has its own rules about recording. In many states, uh, you have to ask permission. Say, hey, doc, I'd like to record this call. I think that's just polite. Just polite. Um, you're in, uh, yeah, you're in California. I think we are a one-party state, but you'll have to check. Two-party states mean both people on the call have to agree to it. One-party state means only one of the people on the call has to know it's recording. That's kind of nutty, but uh, there are states that do that. I can't remember. California's a two-party state. Okay, Scooter X is telling me he's the uh, he's the king of these things. Uh, he knows all all of the ins and outs. Yeah, so that means you'd have to ask the doctor ahead of time. Is it okay if I record this? I can't imagine that he would uh, disagree. I think that's a great thing to do. Uh, I don't know what service you're using, but if you're using Skype or Zoom, I think Zoom's used a lot these days, as we talked about at the beginning of the hour. You shouldn't have any trouble. So nice to see you all. I'm going to leave it there for now, but I'll play around with it later. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, and uh, <laughs> Dr. Mom, Grandma uh, said, uh, you know, can I play my tuba through a face mask? And somebody else said that to me in an email, I think. And, uh, of course, the answer is no, unless you cut a hole in it. And then it's, the it's, it's useless as a mask. So <laughs> I think I'm just going to have to... Uh, at the moment, I'm not playing with anybody. I'm just playing my own tuba in my own house and uh, don't have to worry about a face mask. To tell you the truth, I'm nervous about tuba Christmas. Are we going to be done with this by December? Can we have big gatherings by then? I sure hope so. Uh, I would hate to do a virtual tuba Christmas because I don't know how to do it. By the way, speaking of which, I was going to mention this. Somebody, uh, I think it was the last caller, talked about you know, these orchestras that are doing virtual concerts and stuff. And I've been doing a lot of research into how to how to do that online live from a bunch of different remote locations. And it's not easy. In fact, I don't know how I do know how the orchestras are doing it. They are pre-recording. Each member is pre-recording their part. And then a video editor is putting it all together. Uh, and and that's that's how they have to do it. That's how that um did anybody watch the uh, iHeartRadio 
uh, Fox uh, living room concert. I think it was last weekend. Uh, and the number of artists had remote people playing together, apparently. But really, they all recorded their parts separately and they were all edited together. Now, there are some real-time, live, uh, latency-compensated systems to allow several people, not a bunch of people, but up to like four or six people in remote locations to jam together, to play together with, with without latency issues. One of them is called Jammer, J-A-M-M-R. Uh, the other one is called Jam Kazam. And I'm looking into those for the possibility of a virtual Kol Nidra in September. Uh, because while I'm hoping against hope that everything's cool by December for Tuba Christmas, uh, I, I think that there's a fair chance it may not be when we get to September. So that's what I'm looking at. Maybe I'll talk about that sometime. All right, Scotty. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Stay safe. Weekend. Stay healthy. Uh, you bet. You too. All right. Take care. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches, eh, all that technology surrounding us in our lives, changing our lives. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the phone number if you want to talk high tech with me. 888-827-5536, toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. Line two, Tom Johnson Creek, Wisconsin. Hello, John, uh, Tom. Hi, Leo. Great to speak to you. Well, it's great to talk to you. Thanks for calling. What okay, can I, I have a yeah? What can I do phone. for you? <laughs> okay, uh, I have a question about home video TVs. Uh, for many years, I um, had Dish service, and I was able to watch my programming on iPads and, and such quite easily. But uh, since trying out other services, nobody comes close to that. Interesting. And, uh, so there, was there a Dish app? Is that how it worked? Right. Yeah. There was a Dish app. What they had incorporated into it was something called a Sling or Slingbox. Oh, I know. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And those are no longer made, apparently. Nope. So I'm wondering if there's an alternative because I've used other services, but they all claim that their apps you know, give you your, their programming, but they don't. Nothing compares. So, so are you still using the Dish satellite? No, I've, I've tried other <clears throat> services. Oh, you were using and, uh, uh, you were using the uh, Dish over the top service, the internet only service, not the satellite service. No, no, <clears throat> I had actually Dish satellite. You did have the satellite. Years, okay. But at the same time, they had the sling box built in. Yeah, Tom. So that I could no, watch I understand. My programming and right. it was easy. But uh, so other services, this whole compares. this whole idea, it's because times are changing. This whole idea of I have all this gear in my house and I want to be able to watch it on the road. That's what the sling box did. You'd put a little box right. connected to the internet and connect all your devices to it, and then you could come in over the internet and watch it remotely. It was a, it was a good idea, but the reason Dish bought them <clears throat> and the reason that Dish stopped selling them, stopped making them, is People aren't doing it anymore. So what are the devices that you wanted to access remotely? Well, I'd like to be able to watch my content, and I've not gone to any of the streaming services yet. I imagine that's probably inevitable. So you're using, so what you really want to do is watch your Dish DVR. Is that what you're saying? Well, I had another service that I'm about ready to turn loose, um, but I, I would like to be able to, whatever service I get, not not internet streaming, but if I get another satellite service or cable service, to be able to have that content available to me, and since those providers do not have, you know, a, a, a good setup, uh, I wanted to, like a sling box, you'd be independent. You could, right. Whatever you content you have, you're pumping it out to the internet to your devices independently of them. So most of the cable companies offer this kind of service. Comcast does, Spectrum does. Uh, I don't know about Cox, but I bet they do. I bet, you know, I, I, most of them do where they have their own app. In fact, Spectrum does an Apple TV app that uh, essentially gives you access to all the live channels, all the DVR, everything you want to do. Comcast, a similar uh, thing. I can watch TV 
that, you know, as a Comcast subscriber, you're not getting it from your house. You're getting it over the Internet. And that's really so right. we call that over the top or OTT. I, I hate all these acronyms, but I understand why we need them because it's complicated. OTA is over the air through an antenna. OTT is over the top through the Internet. And then, of course, there's the traditional cable. Um, so it, I guess the answer is it depends what you want to do. Uh, these days, a lot of people are subscribing. Dish offers one. Uh, uh, AT&T uh, used to offer one. I think they're coming back with a new service. Um, YouTube TV is very good. I use it. These are over-the-top subscription services. I'll give you as an example YouTube TV. For 50 bucks, you then can go to tv.youtube.com on any device, your iPad, your laptop, your TV, because they have... Uh, apps for Roku and Apple TV and all of those, and watch live locals, plus a, a kind of a what looks like a minimal cable package of things like Turner Classic Movies, ESPN, stuff like that, for 50 bucks mm -hmm. a month. They've basically become an, a, a cable provider. And then they even sell, just as your cable company does, HBO and Showtime and other additional subscriptions. So the idea is forget the cable, forget the coax coming in, forget the antenna, do it all over the Internet. And because you're doing it over the Internet, you can do it wherever you are, even on the road. So that's, I think, right. what's... What's the coming thing? Just as DVDs are gradually being replaced by streaming, you know, you don't buy them. Well, some people still do, but most people don't buy DVDs anymore. They buy uh, a digital copy from iTunes or Amazon or somewhere like that and watch it on their TV. So just kind of forget about doing that since we're in the middle of a, of a shift to all yeah, streaming. Yeah, I mean, it's... A, it's <laughs> If you have stuff you want to watch, but it sounds like what you want to watch is the contents of your DVR and the contents of the live, over-the-air stuff. Is that basically it? Well, yeah, I wanted the complete programming available. Through you your know, cable on, subscription. On yeah. Devices. Yeah. Right, correct. Yeah. So and who's your cable company you know, now? That was this. I'm using DirecTV now, but I okay. want to leave. Yeah, I don't blame you. Um so I'm sure DirecTV has an app. It may not be as good as the uh, Dish app. I would, if you want to leave no. for 50 bucks a month, I think YouTube TV provides a pretty good package. They have a free trial. Before you leave DirecTV, install the free trial. <clears throat> Make sure it'll do everything you want. One of the things they offer is you can have six people on your account. Each of them has their own private DVR. So everybody in the family can record the shows they want to watch, which I think is great. The DVR is awesome. It's unlimited. You just say, yeah, record that show. Yeah, record that show. Yeah, record that show. Uh, it couldn't be easier. You, they have a directory that looks just like your cable directory. Uh, you can watch live TV uh, with a slight delay, but not, not significant, maybe a 15, 20 second delay. I think it's honestly, these are the, this is where we're going. Uh, as more and more people get high-speed internet, the advantage of it is it works with your digital gear, your tablets, your computers, and your TV if it's internet connected. And since everybody's in that kind of moving into that sphere, I think that that's the future. I think that's why they don't sell the Slingbox anymore. The idea of selling hardware is kind of going, even DVRs is kind of going by the wayside. Did, would that do everything you want it to do? You, you need to use the DVR from the streaming service, or is there a, one that yes. you can purchase and just kind of keep it? Okay, so you can't just have one that's independent of whoever your no. service is. No. Okay. Uh, but you, you will see once you start using it, you probably don't want one. If you want a DVR, um, there, you know, you can still buy TiVos. You can still buy Channel Masters. You can still buy HD Home Runs. You can still buy Tableaus. There are still hardware devices. I, In my opinion... They're going to go away. I think that's the that's the trend I see, a movement away from physical objects to Internet objects. And so, but you can still buy all of those. Those are four name, brand names, TiVo, Channel Master, uh, HD Home Run from Silicon Dust, and Tableau. There, there are others that are physical. You know, you connect a hard drive, you can record, um, that you can connect to a streaming service and record, that kind of thing. So if you really want to do that, I think that's a hybrid interim technology that's going to be eventually also go away. So, so, so just look ahead to full full cloud, full uh, digital. Yeah. Now, there's a problem. Okay. <laughs> As people in the chat room are pointing out, the, the, um, most of the Internet service providers these days are also cable companies <laughs> in many cases. They're either cable right. companies or phone companies. So they don't like this trend because you're riding on their Internet 
to buy the premium services they used to sell you directly. So they're doing a number of things to kind of slow this down. I wish the FCC had uh, continued to regulate this, but they, they washed their hands of it. One of the things they're doing is bandwidth caps. So they may limit how much you can download. You might have to pay more. That's their whole goal is to get more money out of you. That's the whole thing they're losing, right? Uh, some, in some cases, um, you know, bandwidth caps are one thing they're doing. In some cases, uh, they may be degrading signals. Um, you know, you may not get the best results. So that's why it's a good idea to try before you buy on these over-the-top services. I think they're better. Internet, if you get Internet standalone, the price goes up. But so whatever you save on the yep. streaming service... Yeah, they're not stupid. The yeah, they're not stupid. Yeah. They're going to try to get as much, extract as much money out of you as they used to. Oh, sure. But given the cable bills come, you know, sometimes top a hundred dollars a month, I think in the long run, you know, it depends on what the content is that you want. Uh, if you're going to be paying for content in addition to your internet, and they're going to raise the internet, you know, you know how it works. <laughs> this, this is this is life in the big city. Okay. All right. Well, thank Thanks, you very Tom. Much. Great to talk to you. Yeah, I think it's time to stop because you don't want to. Ideally, you don't want to buy additional hardware. You might buy a Roku or an Apple TV and then connect it to the internet, and then it's easier. The internet changes more rapidly. Price models can change. Content can change. It's just the way everybody's moving, and the only people who hate it are the cable companies because they they want. But they're figuring out ways. They're you know they're selling you services over the top too. Our show today brought to you, quite literally, brought to you by Cash Fly. We love the Cash Fly. Couldn't live without the Cash Fly. Cash Fly makes it all happen for us. There are CDN, you notice a content delivery network. And Cash Fly is the best CDN. First of all, I love them because when we first started doing Twit, we're, our 15th anniversary is coming up in a couple of weeks. When we first started doing Twit, it was so hard to figure out how to get the data uh, to the people, you know, we, we, you know, it was expensive. And we were, t we were trying things like BitTorrent and so forth. Along comes Cashfly said, Leo, let us help. And boy, do they help. Cashfly is getting better and better all the time. There's a new service they just added called 100% Cash Shield that's remarkable. So the way Cashfly works, the way a content delivery network works, they have servers all over the world. And what happens is they cache that data. So when there's a new show comes out, we, we cash fly, send it to cash fly. Cash fly then sends it out to all the caching servers. Now, if the cache goes stale after a period of time, it goes stale, they redownload it from us. And that can cost you money with 100% cash shield. You'll benefit from a drastic reduction in data transfer fees with AWS's S3 and other cloud storage origins by increasing your cash hit ratio to hundred percent. So you're always getting it from your separate storage, your 100% your cash shield storage at CashFly. You're never getting it from anywhere else. And for consumers, for your users, whether they're looking for 4K video or podcasts or software, they want it delivered instantly, anytime, any device, anywhere in the world. And that's what CashFly does. Whether it's getting your web page to load faster, your video to stop buffering, your games to download and play right like that, you always need to be faster. And with 100% cash shield, it's not going to cost you more. You can't do that. You can't be faster when your cached items are being evicted for large one-off requests costing you a fortune in transfer out fees. 100% cash shield and cash flies guaranteed uh, availability now avoids it completely. It's next generation content delivery. Next generation keeps your data and content closer to your customers without having them ride on any other, you know, backbone. You can buy as much space as you want. Your data will always be fetched from 100% cash shield rather from the origin. Your origin spend can go down by thousands of months, and there will be no cash misses. 100% cash shield, another reason to go to twit.cashfly.com. Just for you right now, Cashfly is giving away a complimentary, no pressure, no sales pitch analysis of your current CDN bill and usage trends. You send them your bill, they'll tell you, hey, you're overpaying. In many cases, as much as 20% or more for your CDN. 
Get the best. Use what we use. Twit.cashfly.com. We love them. We've been using them for more than a decade. Thank you, Cashfly. <laughs> Twit wouldn't be here without you. Twit.cashfly.com. Leo Laporte. The tech guy. Yeah. 8888. Ask Leo. Johnny Jett, our travel guru, coming up. These days, Johnny Jett's mostly talking about how to get money back. <laughs> <laughs> from from your travel plans for this summer. But uh, well, he'll have other things to talk about, too. In fact, uh, stay tuned. He's coming at about 10. If you've got questions, you can ask in the chat room or you can call 8888-ASK-LEO. We can pass them along to Johnny. Ross is on the line from Sun Lakes, California. Hello, Ross. Oh, hello, Leo. Uh, I have an old senior citizen kind of question for you. I've been listening to you over 30 years. Oh, my and, goodness. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. I like to harass you with a question every eight <laughs> to nine years. <laughs> so, That's one good. Of, one of my old, slow, retarded senior questions. <laughs> you're, you know? you're, you're a low-grade teaser. That's good. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, Leo, what I wanted to ask you, um, uh, you know, I have trouble on my cell phone um, when I, uh, on the two-factor authentication, a certain websites I go to, and, you know, they like to use your cell phone, you know, to, to contact you for the two-factor authentication. Yes, and, um, they send you a text, yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. And then sometimes, Leo, they say invalid uh, number. And this is my cell phone number, that, uh, and I'm with the public wireless, you know, and I've had it, uh, 90, my 97-year-old mother even has. Oh, that's on, nice. On, on Republic, because it's low cost, you know what I mean? And, yeah, no, I like and, Republic. I think it's very good. So here's the deal. Uh, yeah. That's their fault. That's the service that you're trying to use fault. There's nothing you can do about it. I experience uh -huh. that sometimes with Google Voice. They don't like those phone numbers. <clears throat> I'm guessing Republic Wireless is doing something odd uh, with their gateway to the Internet yeah. that's making... Yeah, I heard, yeah, I heard the, uh, that they have uh, 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 VOIP, voice over... Yeah, uh, that's why. Uh, and, yeah. yeah, And I heard that when I asked them in their discussion group and, and they thought that maybe that's the problem. Yep. There are some uh, banks and others that won't send. And, and, and what you should do is call the company and say, look, I can't do two factor with Republic wireless. You got to fix that. Cause they could fix that. Yeah. I've run into this problem uh, for the last couple of years, two or three times. Now, most recently, Leo, it's with the, with the veterans administration. Uh, they have three different kind of logins you use. And, um, and one of them is called ID.me. And, and when I try to go in on that one, that's the one they say, and that, now I can get in. But, yeah, you're never going to convince. Uh, you're never going to convince the veterans yeah. to change <laughs> to change how they do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what do, yeah, what do I answer you? Is there a workaround? I mean. Uh, there could be. There could be. So, truth is, text message. Uh, uh, authentication, while better than no two-factor, you should always use it if you can, uh, is not as secure as other kinds of two-factor authentication. The idea of two-factor authentication, you, I think you get uh, this, Ross. The idea is not only do you have to know your email, you know, your login, and your password, that stuff uh -huh. that you have in your brain, they use a second factor to prove you are who you say you are. That's the whole that's point of this. One. Yeah, and the, and one, the second yeah. factor with SMS is so the, the three factors can be something you know in your brain, like a password, something you have, like a, a dongle, a little physical key, or your phone, is that something you have? Or third, something you are, that's fingerprint, face ID. Those are the three ways we can authenticate you. And two-factor, it means instead of just using one of those, it uses another one. So in this case, they're saying, in addition to your password, we're going to have to have you verify that you are the owner and possessor of this phone. The realize, reason it's not as good a way of doing it is it's easy if a bad guy wants to target you, yeah. and only if he wants to target you, to steal your phone number. He can call the phone company, call Republic Wireless, and say, oh, this is Ross, I lost my phone, can you mail me a new SIM? Yeah, I know it's good security. You know. it's yeah, so, right. yeah. so it's still better than a password. The bad guy has to be targeting Ross. 
because he has to know who what your phone number is, and he has to figure out how to get that phone number away from you. So it's still better than nothing. But what you should do is look at the VA or ID.me and see if they have another form of two-factor. For instance, a much better way to do it is to use an authenticator program on your phone. Uh, I recommend one called Authy, A-U-T-H. Oh, let, let me write this down. Let yeah, me, let me, yeah, this is a really good one. It's an app called Authy. Uh -huh. comes from a company called Twilio. It's completely free. A-U-T-H-Y. A-U-T-H-Y. And it's Authy.com. It works on iPhones, Androids. It works on desktops. They have extensions for browsers. And it generates a new six-digit authentication number every 30 seconds. So it's only good for 30 seconds. It's a really good way of doing it, and it's much harder for the bad guys to steal that. Yeah. But before I before I I should give you one more caveat though, though Ross before we move on that is it has to be supported by the service you want to use the VA has to say oh you don't have to use a phone number if you want to use an authenticator is usually what they call it sometimes they say the Google authenticator that's wrong oh, okay. but if they or IDme dot me they they're more likely to be able to use that check and see if they can use an authenticator app much better anyway than texting. Now, now uh, the Google Google phone number. What is that all about? If I was to get a Google phone number, could that be used in some way? Uh, yeah, you could. You could use it, but it may have the same issues. In fact, probably will. If they don't work with oh, okay. with Republic Wireless, they probably don't work with Google Voice. That's easy to get. Voice.google.com. They're free. I like them. Um, the chat room's telling me that ID.me does support um, authentication using. Um, a, a, a uh, it looks like a, a device. They also support the best way of doing it. I'm not going to recommend this to you, Ross, because it's costly uh -huh. and uh, it's complicated. But the people who are really at risk, you know, people like me who are targets, use um, physical keys. This is a, called a Yubi key, and you actually put it in the phone and it and press a button and it authenticates you. And that's even harder because bad wow. guy bad guy would have to knock me on the back of my head and steal my keys. <laughs> uh, Ross, I, I'm glad you called. This is a common problem. And and if you can figure out a way around it, do. It's worth it. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Much more secure if you can. So what you what you'd probably need to do is set up uh, set it up with ID.me first, and then have the VA use ID.me. So yeah, I think Google Voice is probably for a lot of things. Google Voice won't work for the S the two factor SMS, but you don't want to use two factor SMS anyway. You want to use an authenticator program. Oh, that's another point. And this is a good one to know, Ross. You may have a choice, a lot of times you do, between sending you a text or calling that number. And it may work. They'll call the number and give you that six-digit code. That may work better if they call the number. It might work with Republic Wireless. So, yeah, you can use your ID.me account and add an authenticator or other ways of doing it. Johnny Jet, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good, healthy, happy, and the family's healthy and happy because you're staying at home, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, actually, I don't think I've left the house this week. Besides the walk around our uh, neighborhood, which they now tell you to wear a mask. Yep. Or, or a, a covered. Something I've been I've been wearing a mask since it started because I always thought that would help. I mean, it's not. I think part of their fear is you you think, oh, now I'm I'm safe. I can walk up to people. I can have conversations. I can go out. No, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> right. You're not completely safe. You should still keep your distance. No, but there that. are people still traveling. And uh, why? I guess they well, have some to. People, I, I just read an article just now on CNN about um, a mother, a woman had to go see her mother before she died. Oh, yeah. She was dying. No, that's a good and reason. So, that's a good reason. It's, and that's a good reason. So she said, she, and she was the only person on this American wow. flight from DC to Boston. So they upgraded her first class. They call her by her name on the uh, um, PA, which actually has happened to me before uh, 20, 30 years ago. I was flying LA to Fresno. I was the only person on the plane. And the pilots were like, uh, Mr. Jet. <laughs> no. It was awesome. We're so great. Glad to have you. Thank you. Yeah. And I would guess that if you're alone on a plane, it's pretty safe. Or if you're, if the plane is so sparsely, 
uh, populated sure. that you can keep your distance. What is it? Well, three rows you want to keep away from. Don't don't be within three rows of anybody else. Isn't that it? And wipe everything yes. down. Um, For sure. I presume the flight attendants are wearing masks now. Uh, you you should wear a mask, of course. Yep. And the airlines are doing. Actually, I, I got a notice. I was on their website, Americans, yesterday, saying that they're uh, you know doing the social distancing, so they might move your seat. Yeah, and they're they're trying to, to help accommodate you do people, that. depending yeah. on the flight load. That's awesome. The other thing, of course, uh, you should. Um, uh, oh, what was that? What was I going to say? You sh you don't have to worry about the air, right? Because sometimes people think, but it's recirculated air. But all the evidence is that it, it, the yeah. person has to be physically proximate to you, right? The air goes through a HEPA filter. It's it's yeah, it's, it's, it's like clean, they're, right? They're, they're, they're supposedly hospital grade, ninety nine point right. nine percent, I think they say. Right. So when I fly, I actually point the the uh, air vent At on you? me to create a force field. Oh. <laughs> and even though it's freezing cold, I bundle up. I wear a hat. But I had one. Like so don't worry about the recirculated air on a plane. That is not a problem. That is clean air. Yeah. Yeah. It's clean. Yeah. So I I created like a force field and I <laughs> and I think it worked my last flight because um I had people coughing around me. Oi. And not, you know, That's knock on terrifying. water, not get sick. That is and that terrifying. Was, that was over a month ago. Yeah. You probably you've but, passed through the quarantine period. You're yeah. all right. Yeah. But you should not be traveling right now. You can be dreaming about travel. There's plenty of places to go. Oh, I still am because I know I'm not going to be out of out of the country for a year at least, not till there's a vaccine. Makes me so sad. I love to travel. Yeah. So, and how are you doing with your um, refund refunds? From well, I saw that the DOT just told airlines you have to refund the money if you cancel the flight. That is true. And that I was thought yesterday. they always had to. They they did, but, but they some airlines, doing it. Ahem, United, JetBlue, <laughs> they've been playing hardball where they're just trying to give travel credits. Well, now and, there's federal prosecution if you don't give the money back. You know, there's still a little bit of a gray line. Um, you know, they're given the DLT's now giving them a little bit of time before they start uh, you know, making it mandatory that they send an email to people saying, listen. If you got a voucher, you're entitled to a to a refund if you had your flight was canceled because of this. And also, uh, I called last night. I called four or five different airlines. I called because I had five different flights coming up on different airlines, and you know, I I was on hold for some of them. And and Air Canada, I spoke to. They're like, sorry, we can't. We're not going to give you a refund because your flight hasn't been canceled yet. See, that's so, the problem. They're they're not canceling all flights, but only about half of flights have been canceled so far, right? They're not canceling them all. Yeah. So, but the trick is to wait. Try and wait till the day before at least. Some airlines like Air Canada, you need to call at least two hours before your flight takes off to make sure you get your money back. Otherwise, they'll say, sorry, you're a no-show. And I was on hold for, you know, 30 minutes probably uh, yesterday with them. So what you do is just wait, wait to a day, a day before and just find out if they cancel or not. If they cancel it, then you're entitled to a refund. And this is not just for U.S. carriers. This is for any foreign carrier that fl that your flight is either to or from or within the U.S. So as long as that flight, I mean, let's say you're flying Alitalia from Rome to uh, New York and, and that flight's canceled, they owe you that money. But if that flight's Rome to Paris, they do not owe you that money. But there are European laws that you can go after. And actually, I, I do have a website for you. My buddy, uh, Cranky Concierge, <laughs> he, he started one called Ref Refund Hunter. It's a service where um, you type in Refund Hunter, Cranky Concierge. Actually, I'll put it in the chat room and tweet it out right now. But he charges $30 for this, and he'll actually monitor your flight so you oh. don't have to worry about this. And oh. then he'll tell you what you're owed. I mean, you still might have to do the phone calls. But he'll at least like let you know if there's a refund available. Right. Refundhunter.com. But he's getting creative. I mean, in this climate, he usually books travel. No one's booking travel. <clears throat> I called American Airlines two days ago to cancel my uh, – I had a I had a Maui to L.A. flight next week. Oy. And the agent picked up right away, although I do have an a, 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 you know, I'm a freaking flyer, so I have a different phone number. But the agent said, you know, she's still in the call center. She was nervous about getting sick. And that all she's been doing is cancellations. She said she, yesterday, the day before, she did all cancellations except one booking. I mean, that's scary times. Well, who would want to fly unless you had to? You had to see a relative or this. Right. Though I have to point out, this is FlightAware uh, current. 
There's a lot of planes in the sky. There are. You know, American Airlines would fly 14 flights between L.A. and New York. I looked the other day, and they were still doing 10. Yeah. But starting next week, uh, they're changing the block, and they're going down to four. So th th it's going to dr drop drastically. But there's still plenty of uh, lift right now. And um, but just it's just a lot of it's cargo. Yeah. And also people who really need to get around. I mean, there's doctors, and nurses. Aren't And even aren't there reasons? Uh, I think there are rules that if you don't make a certain number of flights, you might lose that route. The right? slots? No, that, that is, is that a not, rule, but they, they but that's not, not in effect that. right now. So no. they fortunately have, uh, you know, the airports have said, you know, don't worry about that right now. And That would be and, really heartless it, to say, oh, you didn't fly that route, so we're going to take it away. But that they route. were doing that in Europe and just until a week or two ago. Until they just, uh, we all gotta, you know what? We all gotta give every us everybody has some slack. Just let's everybody give everybody else some slack, okay? This is a tough time, uh, and they are. I, I, I mean, they really are. I mean, I, I think for most people, and especially in America, you know, and New York City, when you know, when the tough gets going, they really do get yeah. tough, and it's also the best time in America. It's usually the worst and the best. I was in New York That's for right. 9 11. That's right. And I saw it firsthand the yep. best and the worst. Best and the worst. And, and this I think, one is I think we're a that now. long, drawn out 9 11. That's the problem. This is going to go on for a while. Tempers are going to fray. Patients will fray. They you are. Have to, everybody needs to make a conscious effort, I think, a conscious and, effort. And it's going to take a long time for the travel industry to bounce back. It's just not like when it's over. All of a sudden, there are going to be plenty of flights. I understand that as well. They're cutting you know? capacity so much. I understand their reluctance to give the money back because, you know, they may they, may, they need it. So, um, right. but at the same time, we need it more than you do. Sorry. Right. <laughs> uh, and you and you should give it back if you've canceled the flight. So, um, I, don't be I, I in do a have hurry. A fun but website. How much time do we have? I got 15 seconds. Go ahead. Oh, then forget it. I'll wait. No, next no, week. no. Give me in suspense. No, no, because it's a good website. I want to spend time on You're it. You're going to say how to keep a bozo. You want to know how to keep a bozo in suspense? <laughs> I'll tell you next week. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, johnnyjet.com. Go there, buy stuff, help him out, help a fella out. Thank you. I don't know if you're selling anything, but I'm <laughs> uh, not really selling much. But I do have like affiliate links to Amazon. Yeah, and use his affiliate. If, links. if you buy stuff from Amazon, you know, I, I assume you have an affiliate link to Amazon. Uh, where? Yeah, maybe you should. Um, if you don't, I think we probably do. Put, oh, I know that used to be. It's very lucrative. I know. Yeah, you know. it's not that lucrative. They give you about. I think they give you four percent. Yeah, that could but, be a lot. I, I think we use that. I don't really know off the top of my head. I'm not in charge uh, of monetization. I'm in charge of spending. <laughs> so do you want me to tell you this website? And I'll give yeah. it to everyone next week, or do you yeah. want me to wait? No, well, I'll save it. It's, I mean, we all have to suffer together. All right, good. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll wait. <laughs> I love it. I mean, it's really cool. Oh, good. All right. And Oh, you know what I forgot to mention, by the way, and one of your uh, listeners uh, reminded me last week in the chat room. I always read the chat room, by the way, at the end of this. I can't read it during. Obviously, I just, right. Well, I, I think you might have that skill. I, I don't. Well, I'm ADD. <laughs> but anyway, they, 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 I forgot to tell, tell people, and I will tell them next week, um, that, you know, the real IDs have been um, extended for a year. So you don't have to worry about running out. To oh, the, that's good. The, that's well, huge. I'll put that in my notes for next week. That's huge. Not that I need it. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, Lisa has all her documentation. She has, you know, I have a passport card as well as a passport. Both of them work uh, for air travel. For so sure. um, I don't feel my like daughter, I need a real ID. But And actually the passport uh, services have just... They're basically stopping unless it's an emergency. Wow. And we just got lucky because our daughters just showed up in the mail... Oh, two weeks ago. Oh. Fortunately, we were right away. Once we got a birth certificate, we applied for her passport. And I've actually, I've also applied for Nexus and global entry for her. Although oh, that's you can all. do that for a kid, a baby? Yeah, they have to. Nice. I mean, Jack has it. And he's, wow. You know, he the got whole it when family's he got global entry. One. Wow. Yeah. The, everyone in your party has to have it. I know. You can't just go by. Otherwise, you can't yeah. go through. Yeah. So what am I going to do? Leave my uh, I don't think wife I ever, behind? I don't think I ever got approved. Anyway. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888. Ask Leo. What did Jenny say after all? What did she say? Um, phone uh, number. I gave you that, didn't I? Oh, website, Tech Guy Labs. 
Labs.com. TechGuyLabs.com. If you hear something on the show, you want a link, you want to know more information, you want to hear the answer again, it's all there. Every show, uh, including uh, this current episode, uh, thanks to James Ruvo, who's scribbling as we talk. Hey, Joe, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Are you there, Joe? Hello, Joe. Oh, yeah, this is Joe. Come on over, my friend. Welcome. Oh, okay. Um, I've been watching you for a long time. Thank you. On, uh, my new iPad because it's a little bigger than my phone. Nice. But I, I, I'll, there's a second question I have that I wanted to ask you about that. But my first question involves um, having choir practices virtually uh, using Jitsi versus uh, Zoom. And um, I guess Kim told me that you did compare the two last week. Um. We've talked a little bit about this. As you know, we had a musician. Uh, he was in a um, uh, mandolin band, and they wanted to continue to practice, as many do. And the problem, of oh, course, the mandolin thing. yeah, yeah. The I problem, of course, yeah, is that almost all of these. If you've ever done a Skype call, you you even see this now when you see uh, you're watching news and they're on a Skype call or a satellite call. What do you think, Joe? Two, three. Yeah. For. Well, Barry, and and that's called latency. That's the delay between the two connections. And of course, if it's one thing to have a conversation, it's annoying. But if you're trying to sing or play music together, that is not going to work. In fact, <laughs> we did a Zoom call singing somebody "Happy Birthday" uh, in our company this week, and it was a it was a nightmare. I'll play it. <laughs> I'll find it. And I'll play it. It just it didn't work so well. Everybody's at a different part of the song. So clearly, you're going to need something with low latency. And there are solutions. You don't want to probably use the generic conferencing solutions because they're not prioritizing for latency. They're prioritizing. They want to keep latency relatively low, but they also want to have image quality and sound quality high. There's a lot of other things they're looking at. So latency can be an issue on the traditional stuff. There are, though, are you, you're going to do it live, I presume, right? Oh, yeah. In fact, uh, Scott mentioned something called Jammer that works for audio. Because exactly. Because practice really doesn't need video. Exactly. It needs audio. And apparently Jammer does not have lag time. It's exactly. designed, as you might guess from the name, for people to jam. It's J A M. Are, I think I don't think there's I don't think there's well I may be wrong on that anyway yeah that's that's one that uh, I don't I haven't used any of these because I'm not a musician but yeah um, these are going to definitely because they're designed for people playing together uh, they're going to be uh, definitely a lot better than the, the the programs that are designed just for you know conference calls J A M M R uh, dot net and I would what I would do is try it. You know, and if you can get a couple of the choir members together, say, look, we're, we're looking for a solution. You want to help me out? It won't take more than a couple of people on a call to understand if it's going to work or not. Oh, OK. Well, thank you very much for that, because my wife has choir practice and oh. then my sister also does. And her choir practice, my wife currently has Zoom set up. And they tried Zoom, but can't do it. the mute, uh, yeah. you can't listen to everybody at the same time yeah. even. Yeah. Scott was talking about uh, he, he and his family and friends are going to have a Seder, a Passover dinner together. And normally they'd be singing. And he said, what we're going to do is mute everybody but the canter. Let the canter sing. because <laughs> And everybody listen. You can all sing along, but we won't be able to put your uh, audio on there for that exact reason. That's the problem. So, um, but there are solutions for that. The, the, the problem is nowadays everybody's just using Slack because it's what everybody uses and everybody knows, but it's really designed for business teleconferences. It's not designed for all the crazy ways we're using it. So, uh, including singing happy birthday. <laughs> Jitsi wouldn't be any better. Again, it's a conferencing solution. It's not a music solution. So I would say Jammer or there are, we mentioned a couple, they'll be on the show notes from last week. Um, there are a couple of uh, uh, specially designed programs. And I know people do this. B bands record this way. Now, what, now, so there's the live performance aspect. And that's for practice. That's what you want. If you're a band recording, you might use a system like this just so you can stay in sync. But honestly, you're not going to record that stream. What you're going to do, and programs like Jammer will allow you to do this as well, is record locally your music locally 
and save that file and then send it in and the and the uh, the engineer can then sync them all up perfectly so the the audio you're hearing is really just to kind of mostly stay in sync nothing's going to be perfect the internet is imperfect as we know um, and so uh, it, you can do everything you can to reduce latency. Usually what that means is video quality will be reduced, maybe even audio quality. So that's why you don't use that as your recording. You just use that to get in sync, and then you make local recordings that will be much higher quality. I think this is a great project, and a lot, a lot of people are doing this. You know, the other solutions are fine for getting together. I know, I know book groups and churches and synagogues everybody's using these i think it's great i honestly do i just i think we're very ingenious and we're lucky i guess we live in a time where we can do this and even though we are isolating we are quarantining we at least can use these technologies to sort of you know talk and commune and it, it I, I had a four-way conference call with my distributed family last yesterday it was great you kind of get used to it. I've been doing it with my mom in Rhode Island. She's 87. She can't travel. I can't always get out there. But it's a great way to make a connection to see her. I did my. I talked to my dad also. Um, I th use these technologies. They really do make a difference. And even if it's just FaceTime on your iPhone or, or Skype or Google's Duo, it really makes a difference. Uh, bad news. Uh, <laughs> of course, the bad guys are out. They're out in force. They know everybody's working from home. This is the time to protect yourself. And one of the best ways to protect yourself from ransomware, from malware, from anything that can happen, including hard drive failure and human error, is a good backup. A good backup, that equals iDrive in my book. iDrive is awesome. Did you know most ransomware attacks happen when the IT department's home at night or on the weekends? And, and that means you've got to protect your critical business data 24-7 that means you should be using iDrive. It's backing up all the time. And if ransomware strikes, the snapshot feature means you can go back in time to just before and get all your data back. You can thumb your nose at ransomware artists. iDrive is the best protection out there. In fact, PC Magazine agrees. They gave it their Editor's Choice Award for Best Cloud Backup Solution. And not just for businesses, but for home users, consumers, for businesses. And they've done this six years in a row. Editor's Choice, six years in a row. Back up all your PCs, Macs, and mobile devices into one account, one low cost, with iDrive. And then if the worst happens, you've got a backup in the cloud, safe and secure. Plans start at less than 6 bucks a month for 5 terabytes. You can buy more if you need it, but that's an awful lot. One account for everything. And I'm going to give you 90% off when you go to iDrive.com. Use my name, Leo. You'll get one year. Get the one-year package for 90% off. That's a limited-time offer, so hurry, iDrive. Dot com. Use my name, Leo. John's in Marina Del Rey. Beautiful day, I hope, in Marina Del Rey. Uh, good, good to talk to you, John. Thanks for taking my call. It's actually a little, little overcast. Sun's peeking through, but uh, it's always pretty there, though. I love Marina yeah. Del Rey. Yeah. Hey, listen, I've got. I'm. I'm. I'm not too tech savvy. I'm just an average user of a TV in his bedroom. And here's my story, really quick. We live in a large townhouse complex, and we have piped in Spectrum cable that was renegotiated some time ago. And um, about December, I decided to get a new TV. And I plop in the TV, and yes, we have a cable box with a DVR. And over time, I noticed the voice, the picture's fantastic. TV works great, but then the, the voice would slowly separate yeah. from the TV. Not at all uncommon, because the, yeah. the TV video encoding takes more time than audio encoding. Okay, the audio is lagging behind the voice. In other words, the voice will speak first, so then the, the audio oh, is delayed. Well, bad lip sync, that's a weird one, <laughs> but bad lip sync can usually be fixed in your TV. There'll be a setting, you'll have to look around for it in the audio settings to, right. to, con to sync those up, and you, you'll have to play with it till it looks right. Gotcha. Now, I, I've done that, doesn't work. Because so it's going the wrong direction. That's what's so weird to me. Because usually, voice precedes video, because it's faster to decode. And I bet you, you can't turn it backwards, which is what you want. And this one I'm going to have to think about. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, will be right back. So that, so that, I'm sorry, I had to take a break. So that's weird. So you, so your, your, your setting in there probably only slows down the, 
the audio. It really, yeah, Leo, I'm sorry. It really doesn't make any difference. And I've had Spectrum out three times. They've checked every single connection from the main trunk. We have one trunk and a splitter. No, 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 no it's not lines. that. Yeah. It's not that because it's all coming in in sync, unless it's really out of sync from their central office, in which case every one of their customers would have the problem. Right. It's, it's coming so, in in sync. It almost always does. Okay. And, then, and then when it's getting displayed, it gets out of sync. So it isn't their fault. Okay, but I just how are you connecting your how are you connecting to your TV for this video with an uh, HDMI? Okay, and the audio that you're using is coming from the HDMI. Correct, okay. and I don't have any sound bars or anything like that. I'm just coming straight out straight of the out of the TV, and the HDMI is going into on the other end your cable box. Correct. Well, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, those I mean, should I mean, be in perfect sync. Guys three guys out here and they've pinged it i even took back the tv thinking i had an issue with oh the wow so before you do all of that i don't think it's the cable if it is everybody in the neighborhood's having the same problem got it um what i would try is uh connect a different device to that do you have anything else a monitor for instance that uses atm hdmi see if you can connect something different to see what you what we're doing at this point is isolating it down. Is it the TV? Well, you traded the TV in, so maybe it isn't the TV, but maybe it is because all those TVs are going to do the same thing with the signal they get. So what I would do is get a monitor. If you have a monitor that uses HDMI, plug that in. You'll need to get the audio. The monitor will have to have audio or you'll have to have an audio out but and see if that's in sync. Okay. It, it shouldn't be, but if it is, if it's, if it's in sync, then it is your TV. You might check okay. the cable. Is the TV are the, is the tech in the TV more advanced now than what's coming out of the boxes? Oh yeah. So what happens is yeah. the the HDMI signal and there are a variety of different things that can be coming out. By the way, that's another thing I'm going to tell you in a second is to change the audio decoding. But so what it's getting through that HDMI cable is a digital stream. It's right. it's it's a compressed digital stream. So the TV has a processor in it and software that decompresses both the audio and the video and displays them on the screen. And that delay button is the one that's trying to sync those up. Um, but that, So that's digital. But what you can do, and I would look at, is what may be happening is the decoding of the TV. So again, in the audio section, there are, you can say, different kind. I'm not sure what you're getting from the cable box, but try different decoding. There'll be PCI, there'll be Dolby, there may be DTS. Right. Try different decoders. Have you tried that? Yeah, we've played around. Even the tech guy that was here on uh, Thursday had had done that to a point. Um, and uh, yeah, even, we even went tried to go with a digital cable out from the box into the digital cable in uh, on the TV, and that didn't work either. There was no sound whatsoever. Um, there's so yeah, what, modes. So your cable box has uh, optical audio out. Yeah, I think so. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, digital. Yeah. yeah. That may be more out of sync because it's on, now it's on a separate channel from the HDMI. Yeah. I, 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 I think what you want to do is you want to maybe trade the cable. It could be a bad cable. Uh, you want to uh, tr try different devices on the other end of that cable. You, you want to make sure, see if the cable box is giving you something weird. Uh, I would go in the TV and set it to PCM, not any okay. of the other decoded videos. PCM is straight audio out. Um, and that could be, you know, that could solve the problem because dec your decoder might be slow in the TV. What kind of TV right. is it? It's a brand new Vizio 32-inch smart TV. Now that should be fine. I'm on, you when know, you when watch a smart TV, there's no, there's no, okay. I mean, Wi-Fi, there's no delay. Yeah, yeah, it should be fine. Yeah. Okay. So I would look at, so what's happening is something, that digital signal is coming from the cable box. The TV's not handling properly in some way. Okay. And so I would try PCM audio. Uh, do you have settings to the cable box? Probably not. No. No. Well, minimal. They're very minimal. Look at what the cable box is sending. You might try different things for what it's sending. Um, it, it is possible that it's out of sync from the cable company. Right. Um, and you know, because none of the other, none of the other, we go through TiVo. There's no issue there. We have a okay. TV. No issues there. Okay. And so I you are using other cable. devices on that same cable connection, and you don't have a problem. Correct. Okay, so it's probably the TV. And okay. and so it's settings in the TV. And, of course, you get another TV, it's going to have the same issue because right. it's not a broken TV. It's just the settings. Okay. Um, the Are Vizio, Vizio does have a lip sync feature. 
much. It does. It just didn't work. It just doesn't work. I mean, it goes up to five. You know, each step, I try to look and to see if it resyncs. Now, um, it's a little weird that the voice, the voice should yeah. be ahead of, not behind. That's a little odd. We see the voice. We see the the, the talking head, and then we count three seconds, two to three seconds, and oh, it's that bad. Yeah, but it takes time. It, it wanes. It, it, it starts out. Every time I change the channel, it syncs up. And then over time, it just separates. Um, the chat room has found a... Um, you don't have anything else on that cable box, right? Or a splitter or anything. That's just no, HDMI cable up. straight into the Vizio. Um, there, I'll put a link in the show notes to a th uh, thread on DSL Reports trying to fix audio delay on a Vizio 32-inch... The video is ahead of the audio. Same yeah. problem. Uh, okay, so there's some solutions in here. Uh, you want to make sure you don't have any effects turned on, is one of the things they say. Sound effects off, 3D Sound Plus off, smart volume off. Oh, okay, smart volume. That yeah, I there are a few other things. because So the TV can be messing with the audio. The audio should be ahead of the video. The fact that it's behind tells me it's doing something with the audio. It's taking a while for the audio to figure out what's going on. Gotcha. So I, th it is the TV, almost certainly. Uh, we'll put a link to this DSL reports in the show notes. Um, okay. Trying to, f you can Google it. Do DSL reports trying to fix an audio delay on a Vizio. If you Google that, you'd probably find it. Try a different yeah, HDMI port on the TV. These are all things you can try. But I think we've pretty much narrowed it down. Since you can watch the same cable signal and it's fine on other devices, yes. that's not the cable company. It's that yeah. TV. It's either the cable, which is unlikely, or it's that TV. If you have a different oh, HDMI they... cable, swap out the cable. Got it. We've swapped them out different okay. times. I even ran new coax cable myself. And they checked it. And yeah, they, no, it's not that. It's not the cable. Yeah. Because yeah. because you're yeah. It's yeah. it's the TV. It's the TV's doing something to the audio. It's got some effect on or something. Okay. And that's All what's right. slowing it down. All right, sir. Good luck. Excellent. Gosh, three yeah, seconds would drive me nuts. That's unusable. Oh my God! Especially during this time when we're kind of sequestered. You know? It's designed. That setting's designed for milliseconds, not seconds. That's why you're not noticing anything. It's way too bad. I I think there's some setting in there. Some processing that the TV's trying to do. That would make sense. It's the only reason why audio would be way behind. Audio should be way ahead. All the syncing usually is to get the audio to slow down because video takes a long time to process. It's a lot more bandwidth than all of that. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Good to see you. Hope you're all well. This is Leo Laporte, the tech guy, and I hope if you're under the weather that you feel better soon. Hang in there. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number, 888-827-5536. That's toll-free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. I'd love to hear from you. We talk about tech each weekend right here. And tech could be anything with a chip in it, a phone, a computer. We could talk about the Internet. It could be a smart TV. I talked a little more with our caller. He, he had a weird problem. Usually what happens when you have lip sync issues on your TV is that the audio precedes the video. It gets the, the 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 picture is a little behind, and that's because just because audio is lighter weight, less to do, videos bigger, fatter, slower, and usually on TVs you can find if you dig through the menus uh, a, a lip sync tool that will let you uh, slow down the audio, slow down boy, so it matches the lip sync. But usually when they're it's out of sync, it's out of sync by just a little bit. Our brains are very finely tuned this is one of the things humans do very well to look at discrepancies in faces and if somebody's uh, voice is coming out even five mil five thousandths of a second five milliseconds late your brain goes uh, i must have eaten some bad mushrooms honestly it can make you nauseated uh it's certainly annoying and disturbing but that's the, usually the, the, the scope of it, a few milliseconds behind. I mean, the video is a few milliseconds behind the audio. His is exactly the opposite, and it's a lot bigger difference. He says, the video, the guy will speak on the video, and the audio will be two or three seconds later. Now, that's an awful lot 
And it's the exact opposite. You know, audio should precede video, not not be uh, slower than the video. So uh, after talking a little bit off the air, uh, I think what we, we've probably figured out, he's able to watch that same cable connection on other devices. It's fine. It's the TV. He's got a Vizio TV. And it's probably a setting in the TV. The TV can do all sorts of processing to audio. And, and, and this is my thought process here. And I'm, I'm saying this out loud just so that you can understand one of the things that's useful is, is knowing how to think about these things. So this is the thought process. Okay, normally we can decode the audio faster than we can decode the video. So the, the audio is usually a little ahead of the video. We want to slow it down. In his case, it's the opposite. Hmm, the audio is way behind the video. We'd like to speed up the audio, but no TV has a setting for speed. Why would the audio be behind? Maybe there's some audio processing going on in the television. There's something the TV's doing to slow the audio down. If it were giving, uh, doing some 3D processing, or and, and some TVs, including this Vizio, have settings to do uh, all sorts of things, you know, night mode, 3D processing. Maybe the TV is working more on the audio, and that's slowing it down. And maybe the audio is coming in in a fashion the TV has to decode, has to process. If it's coming in in a surround sound, for instance, he's not listening in surround. He's listening on his TV. So that could be a problem. The TV's trying to set it out to five different channels in the subwoofer and all that stuff. And you could turn that off by going to PCM audio. That's just basically unencoded audio. You could turn off all the special effects, spatial sound, 3D sound. Um, voice correction, oh, night mode, anything that you see in there, tell the TV, look, just play it as it lays. Just when you get it, play it. Don't do any extra stuff. That should help. In fact, now you may have the problem. It speeds it up so much, it's a little bit ahead. That's when you can use that little slider and slow it down. So audio should not be later. And that's where the, that's what I'm always listening for when somebody talks about a problem they're having with technology. I'm always listening for that clue. Oh, Audio shouldn't be later. Audio should come in faster. Mm -mm. That's a clue, right? That tells us something's going on. And that's the thought process I go through. Maybe wrong, but that's the best way. You know, it's helpful to know how to troubleshoot your issues, isn't it? 8888-ASK-LEO. Douglas, Long Island. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Douglas. Good afternoon, Leo. How are you? I am well. I hope you're well, too. I am, too. And I'm really smitten. Here it is, uh... I remember when I first caught your show back in 2016 when you moved from the Burke House to the East Side Studio. I was yes. Like, smitten then, Aww. as I am today. And, Thank you. Uh, I kept your, absolutely, I kept your number in my phone book on my phone, and I needed a, to get some tech help this afternoon. Perfect. You I have the number. the number. That's awesome. Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Really. Thank you so much for, for all the wonderful uh, things you've done and, and the education you've you brought to us. So I remember your first review that was, or the first review that I saw of yours was the Rico Theta. Oh yeah. I still have that. Well, I have the updated version. I can't figure out what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I, They're so. great, but what do you, who are you going to show it to? You got to put on special glasses and stuff. Anyway. I know. Yeah. I know. But uh, I have a question. I had um, was in the market of buying a microphone. And of course I turned to you to find out what type of microphone you use. And I understand you use the Hale PR40. Heil, yeah. Bob Heil, H-E-I-L, is a uh, legendary rock and roll sound guy. Did it for The Who, for The Grateful Dead, Peter Frampton. He designed the little voice thing that Peter Frampton uses to go wah, wah, wah. He designed that as a gift to Peter on his birthday. So Bob is an audio guy. He's also a ham radio, an amateur radio operator. And he always bemoaned the quality of the ham microphones. So he said, I should make a better ham microphone. Eventually, he's made microphones for a lot of people. And more and more radio stations are using these Heil PR40s. They're inexpensive, under $300. They sound great. They're perfect for the kind of work that we do in radio. They reject sound from the rest of the room, so you don't have to have a specially soundproofed room. Um, so, yeah, I love these, and this is what we use everywhere on our podcast. It's become kind of our signature sound. But what, uh, that's not necessarily the right answer for you. What are you looking for? So what happened was I had plugged it into a ProSonus 96 audio interface, and then from there it went into my Mac, my desktop yeah. Mac. Yeah, because and this I is a, what we call a professional it. microphone. It needs to be processed before you can plug it into a USB port. That's correct. And that's what the Personas is doing. Yeah. 
Right. On our Prosonus, there's a 48-volt uh, passive. Yeah. Or, I'm sorry, phantom power. Phantom button. power, that's right. Yes, and I've hit that thing a couple of times, and I was wondering if it could damage the no. microphone. No, no. A well-designed microphone will reject that. So what that's for is this: the microphone we're talking about, and this is true of uh, the, the classic rock and roll microphone, the Shure SM58. Uh, it's true of a lot of uh, microphones radio uses, the Electro Voice RE20. They're what we call a dynamic mic. They use a passive dynamic coil to pick up the sound. But in recording studios, in fancy places, fancier than mine, they'll use condenser mics. These are, instead of these big coils, uh, these dynamic coils, these are little tiny mics. If you see a lapel mic, for instance, on TV, that's a condenser mic. They're very small, but they have to be powered. They need this so-called phantom power. So that's the switch in the personas. If you're using a condenser mic, you'll turn that on. If you're using a dynamic mic, you'll turn it off. But I have done the same thing accidentally turning it on. It, the, the circuitry in the mic should prevent any damage. Great, great. I had originally plugged it into a Behringer, but the problem was it, it had that audio latency. It started to break down and started to crackle. So I switched over to the ProSonus. I'm hoping I'm doing the right thing by using the ProSonus. I have it all kinds of wires in and out of the computer. It doesn't look right, but it seems to work. <laughs> if it sounds good, that's <laughs> that's all. That you don't want to see the wires under my desk. <laughs> if it sounds good, that's good. Yeah, uh, so I will give you a little hint on that. Uh, you were using another device to convert the analog audio coming out of the microphone into digital audio the computer could understand, taking the uh, the jack out of the microphone and turning it into bits for the USB port. And Right, right. What, what little my Mac can understand. You're yes. Right. <laughs> yeah, USB it understands. So the problem is that uh, that's a processor. It has to go through a, you know, it's a little, basically a baby computer that's doing the translation. And there is a chipset, I'm not sure the name of it, but there, it might be Atheros, but there's a chipset that has a problem. It's got a flaw in its software. After one hour, it starts sounding really weird. We call it here in the Twit Studios, Cyloning. It sounds robotic, like you're a Cylon. And we finally figured out it's actually just a, what we call a memory leak in the software on that chip. Because if you unplug the USB side of it, de-unpowering the, the, the uh, device, and then wait a second and plug it in again, it all gets better. And then it goes bad in an hour again. So that's what we call a memory leak, a, a, a bug in software that shows up over time. It eats more and more memory and eventually stops working. And I think that's just that particular chipset. If you're lucky, the Personas is not using that chipset. A lot of devices do, usually cheaper devices. Um, we use the Focusrite Scarlet, and that doesn't have any problem. But occasionally you hear that. If you hear that silenting, the good news is unplug the USB and replug it. We'll always fix it. Almost from the very beginning, the Behringer did that. So we yep. liked it exactly They're that. probably using a cheap a DAC. Yep, it's a cheap, yeah. or it's not a DAC, it's an analog to digital converter, but that they're using a cheap right, one. The, absolutely. The ProSonus is really holding up. The mic yeah. is great. Good. We're, we're running a Zoom group. And, oh, and, yeah, it's so nice. When I see people well lit with a good camera and good audio on Zoom, I, I figure, oh, they must be a podcaster. I, I love it because it makes it just better for everyone. And we're all learning right now, but it's so funny to watch the news, 24-hour news channels, because everybody now is working from home, and see the variety of setups. I The other day I saw somebody on their telephone because the Skype connection could get video but wasn't good enough for audio. And this guy couldn't, it was a former uh, senior editor at uh, the New York Times, uh, Huell, uh, who was a wonderful guy. But I guess either he couldn't figure it out or there was something wrong with the software. So he was using his phone. That reminds me of how we did this in the 1990s when the bandwidth wasn't sufficient. On the ZDTV Netcam network, we'd have people talk on their phone and we'd see a very slow one frame a second picture of them. Mm. It's funny to watch people reliving, relearning all the things we had to learn. <laughs> I'm not going to take up too much of your time. Just one last thing about the Zoom. Can we? Um, is there a delay we can add to it? Is there software that we can add a delay to the Zoom? Because we're having a problem with with bombers, with, with uh, Zoom bombers, and with intruders. Oh, it drives me yeah. crazy. I was mentioning at the beginning of the show, my a, a friend of mine's in a twelve step program. They have their AA meetings on Zoom, and they consistently get the most horrendous, stupid bombers. You kids, not you kids, get off of my Zoom. Um, there are settings 
in Zoom, you should go into the administrative settings to, to mm -hmm. say, for instance, you can only join by invitation. You should also turn off the setting that allows anybody to share their screen. There are things you can do in Zoom. The defaults are not correct because Zoom is set for a business conference where everybody's trusted. But now that we're all yeah. using it, you got to go in. The default settings in Zoom are not ideal, but you can block most Zoom bombing. I will put in the show notes an article from TechCrunch on all the settings you should look at. You can make Zoom much more robust to Zoom bombing. If it's a public meeting and you have to, anybody who wants to get in, like a 12-step AA meeting, that's problematic because you don't want to say invite only. You want everybody to be able to come in. Um, but if you can have a lobby or some sort of way of uh, inviting people in, that's a good way to control it. It's, it's terrible. It's terrible. Grow up. Grow up. <laughs> There's a discourse group, a chat room on discourse, which a lot of the kids and gamers use, where they, it's just for Zoom bombing. And they and they collect Zoom addresses. They put them in there and these jerks. They're, it's sad because most of us, I think, are so generous. We're all helping each other. We're all in it together. And then there's some poorly socialized young people in most cases, but not always. Uh, there are people who have mental illnesses. They're they're sadistic. That's often the case with trolls. They enjoy causing pain, and it's a small percentage. It's a tiny percentage, but it, but the internet is so huge. There's so many people that even this tiny percentage can disrupt, can cause disproportionate problems, and it's so sad. And you know, I would say knock it off, but they don't care. They want you to be upset. They want you to knock it off. This is a problem. It's called trolling. We've had it for years. As long as the internet's been around, there've been trolls. And uh, I, you know, honestly, they're just damaged people. There's just, you know, it's sad. They were they're sadistic, probably because they were abused. Um, but there's no way to convince them to knock it off because they enjoy it. The more angry and upset you get, the more you complain, the more they, the bigger the victory. Sad to say. So uh, I'm just sorry. I think what the only solution is really to, to, to learn how to set up waiting rooms in Zoom, uh, how to secure your Zoom. Uh, we have a couple articles uh, from Bleeping Computer, from TechCrunch, and Ars Technica. We'll put a link in uh, the show notes at techguylabs.com. Anybody who's doing a public Zoom meeting needs to read these first and go into the settings and change them. It's a big problem. And if you can use something other than Zoom... Not a bad idea. It's not that Zoom is more vulnerable. It's just that it's more used. And so uh, this discourse channel is all about Zoom. If people started using something else, they'd, they'd change to that thing, I'm sure. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's sad because I'm seeing so much generosity from almost everybody. And, and we just got to keep focusing on that. We're all in together. Let's be generous. Let's help each other. We're going through a tough time. But, but we, thank goodness, have some great technologies like Zoom that let us get together. Um, and, you know, let's, let's just focus on that, on the good stuff, because there's so much of it. <sighs> Darn it. <laughs> Darn you, kids. Get off my Zoom. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888. Ask Leo. Yeah, he was so good. That smooth sound. Bill Withers will be missed. Passed away this week at the age of 81. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Guy, thank you, Lady, Lady Laura, too. By the way, we love we love all the music you spin. Our musical director. Thanks also to Kim Schaffer. Couldn't do it without her. Now, let's get back to the phones. Line four. Tanner is in Santa Barbara. Hi, Tanner. Hello, Leo. It's uh, nice to finally talk to you. Well, it's great to talk to you, Tanner. Welcome. My my dad grew or I grew up listening to my dad listen to you. <laughs> so we, yeah. But um, my question today is off of um i just got back in the country and i've been gone for a while where were you gonna go i was in the philippines nice how fun did you have a good time 
it was fantastic. It was difficult, but, you know, learned learned a lot, grew a lot. Great nice. Were you in the service or just visiting? I was serving. Nice. Thank you. And um, so I'm going back to school. Um, I mean, assuming all of this craziness. Yeah, someday. And, yeah. 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 Someday I will go back to school. <laughs> yeah. And, well, I'll, I'll go, I'm going back to study for sure. Good. And um, I'm looking for a, a MacBook. And I'm deciding between the Pro and the Air, and I have some questions. About Ooh, because hang on, because I really want to talk to you about this, because the MacBook Air, I'm getting my new one next couple of days, actually. We'll talk in a second. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Yeah. So what are you going to study? So um, I'm going into, I, I have not yet fully decided what I'm going to do. My goal is just get into the accounting program Good. at the university, which I'm attending. Um, so that's, and that's kind of the first step. And then I'm also going to take some science classes and see what I like. So, so science is, so for accounting, any, either the MacBook Pro or the MacBook Air be fine. But you do understand that the trade-off is MacBook Air, better battery life, much more portable, slower. Okay, slower. Slower. But okay. not too slow for accounting. <laughs> your spreadsheets, your all that stuff is fine. Where it would be slower is gaming and things like gaming, like 3D rendering. So depending on what you're studying in science, it may be some of those science apps will require more RAM and more horsepower. But... I don't know. Okay. It just depends what you're studying. Yeah, this is perfect because the main, like, the reason, the reason behind my question is not only for studying, but one of the things I really like to do is making, you know, movies and making videos. And, ah. and so I had a MacBook Pro about, it's like, it's six years old now. Oh, so wow. It, it just, it does and it's full, you know, and doesn't yeah. really run very You're going to see a lot of improvements. And the good news, now here's the thing. <laughs> the only There's only two MacBooks that have the decent keyboard. You have on that old MacBook Pro, that 2014 MacBook Pro, the, a really nice keyboard. In fact, I kept my 2015 yeah. for years because it's a nice keyboard. And then after that, Apple put out the worst keyboard ever designed by man for a long <laughs> time. It was also unreliable. Uh, but with the most recent MacBook Pro, the 16-inch, and the new MacBook Air, they've gone back to switch keys that are, I haven't tried it yet. I'll be getting, like I said, I'll be getting mine in a few days. Uh, everybody reports much better. I do have the 16-inch MacBook Pro, and it's, it is much better. Still not perfect, but it's, much, it's not as good as your 2014, but still better. Usable. Okay. So that's a big issue. Uh, and so that means there's really only two current MacBooks that you could buy, the Mac, the new MacBook Air or the 16-inch new MacBook Pro. Right. And so... So that's that's the keyboard. What else do you want? Um, about the, like, about RAM, I guess, and about speed of, like, processing things because... When you're working with like you know video clips that are like 4K, yeah, and, yeah, uh, all of that. So stuff. you, if you if you're going to be doing 4K, you probably do want a MacBook Pro. It's a lot more expensive. It's almost okay. twice as expensive. What about if you have kind of an external hard drive where you're going to kind of keep everything? No, it's the, it's the so, GPU and the processor that make the difference. Okay. Not the speed. You actually have a very fast hard drive in both MacBooks. They, they use M2 uh, NVMe SSDs in both of them, and they're very fast. They're actually technically not because they're using the T2 chip as the controller, so it's really just raw RAM, raw NL, uh, uh, flash RAM of some kind. I can't remember which they use, but it's very fast, so don't worry about that. Okay. The processor on the MacBook Air, to make it lower power, it's a Intel, um, I think it's a U processor. I can't remember if it's a U or a Y. It's the slower of the two. So it's not a super fast processor. The processor it, on the MacBook Pro is, four, is an I... Intel i7. Yeah, but it's not the... That doesn't tell you enough. Okay. <laughs> it's the model number. Is it a U or a Y? And anyway, whatever it is, it's the slower of the two. Okay. I think it's the I think it's the Y, which is the, is a laptop class, low power. But not as fast. It is at least four core. It's a, it's much faster than the old MacBook Air, about twice as fast as the 2018. Uh, and I love, I think for a student, the MacBook Air is great. It's super portable. It's really simple. It's beautiful. 
It doesn't have that stupid touch bar, which I don't like. It doesn't have the key. It doesn't have the, uh, the um, uh, it has a fingerprint reader, but not the touch bar. So I would say probably for what you want, the MacBook Air is sufficient. Okay. Get, get 16 gigs of RAM. Get as much storage as you can afford. You don't need more than 16 gigs, probably. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I will be getting my MacBook Air, the new one. Nice low price model, better keyboard, much better processors. I'll be getting that uh, any day now. Any day now. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing that. I'll give you a review. To give you the short answer to uh, our last caller's question, the Air uses a low-power Intel chip. It's a much-improved chip. It's a quad, up to quad-core i7, much-improved chip, but it's not the fast quad-core i7 that you can get in a MacBook Pro. And this is Apple always does this. Apple always does this. They they the Pro line's always going to be faster and have higher potential spec. You could buy a bigger drive, more RAM, that kind of thing. But for a student, honestly, I love the MacBook Air. It is the best-selling Macintosh. Always has been for the last. Well, it's ever since the air first came out, what is that, 10 years now? It's just awesome. And uh, I think this new one, again, I don't have it, so I'm giving you a review without trying it. But I think it's going to be very nice. They've fixed the keyboard, uh, and, they, uh, and they've given a lot more power. There's some things missing. <laughs> it's only Wi-Fi 5. <laughs> That's kind of a bummer. Uh, it doesn't have as much storage capacity. And, yes, they're using a low-power processor, which would be a little less juicy. 8888 88, ask Leo. It's hard, you know, that's a laptop's such a personal a personal decision. But I think the new MacBook Air pricing, they start at $999, and the new form factor is great. And I mean, it's gold. Well, you know, how can you not love gold? It's a gold computer. Dick D. Bartolo, Mads Maddest writer, coming up in about 10 minutes. Meanwhile, Brett on the line from Woodbridge, New Jersey. Hello, Brett. Hey, how you doing, Leo? I'm great. How you doing? Well, I'm staying safe in New Jersey. Good man. I know it's a hot spot, so do protect yourself. I have yourself. a question because um, my friend has a Dell um, laptop, and I told her to install Windows 10 because she had 7, and they're not supporting anymore, but now her computer is cursing. Aye. So if she So if she does a reset, is she going to lose the upgrade activation key? If she, uh, no. If she's got, once you have an authenticated Windows 7, what's she going to do to fix it? I mean, what's, what, uh, why would she lose the key? Okay, because I was going to have her do a clean install. Yeah, yeah, she could do a clean install. install. Yeah, yeah, she should. Um, and then he, of the Windows 7. You know what I would do? It would be better not to. You're right. If she doesn't have the serial number, and there are programs you can use to get the serial number, but if she doesn't have what to hand, what I would do is just get it limping along well enough. In fact, maybe you don't even have to. So you're saying Windows 7, did she do the upgrade? I'm not clear. Yes. Oh, I'm I see. And that's that what happened. broke it. I get it. And that's what broke it because I have a model number, and they were saying the Windows 7 don't have any um, drivers for it. Yeah, if it's really old, it may not work on Windows 10. Not everything does. Although that's unusual. If, uh, In my experience, if it runs Windows 7, it's rare that it won't run Windows 10. She says the Windows 10 on her laptop is faster, but it just keeps crashing, but not all the time. But Try Have her reinstall it. In fact, actually, the thing to do, so she can kind of run it, right? The thing to do is get the system uh, information, and see if it's authenticated. You know, in, in the control panel, she can she can look at the system and see if it's authenticated Windows 10. Can I give you the model number? And you can no, no, I, it won't help. I don't I don't have that to hand. Who, who makes it? Uh, Dell. Dell. Yeah, I don't think you should have a problem. Here's the thing. See if it's authenticated. Once it's authenticated, then she can put it. She can wipe the drive, completely erase it, and install Windows 10 clean. Dollars to donuts, that'll fix it. And then she'll still have the serial key. Once right? it's yeah, there is no key. Once it's authenticated, once Microsoft authorizes it and says, yeah, this is legit, 
that machine from then on for the rest of its life, you can put, you can do whatever you want. I mean, if you take too much out of it, they'll say this is a new machine, but you could put a new hard drive in it, for instance, install Windows 10, and it'll say, oh, yeah, it's good to see you again. It's what, it's what they call, it has an entitlement to use Windows 10. There's no serial number anymore. But you're saying that I have to call Microsoft and... No, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> you don't have to do anything. Um, there's a, a, how did she install Windows 10? She... She probably still has that installer, right? Yeah. Yeah. She did it... Um, she did it, I guess, from the update, whatever, the Windows update. No. Well, when did she do it? You can only do it for free from way, way back when. Oh, she did it over a month ago. Okay, so somehow she has a Windows uh, 10 installer. Oh. Um, she just re no, rerun the... Uh, so you can down... Look, okay, so here's, 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 okay. here's what you should probably do. Uh, you can either go to Microsoft.com and get the Windows 10 and put it on a USB key and install it from there. I already sent it to her, yeah. Yeah. So she can put on a USB key install. What she should do at this point is in the installation, she can go into options and she can say wipe the drive, erase it, start over. But again, she should not do that until she looks in the system properties on it and verifies that it's authorized. But once it's Windows 10, once it'll say this is Windows 10, it's an authorized copy. Once she sees that, she doesn't have to worry about it ever again. You never have to call Microsoft or anything. She's now authorized. Now, if it's not authorized, that's another matter. But if she's running Windows 10, it's probably authorized, even if it crashes once in a while. But I can't check that on Google. She would have to check it. On she her has account. to look on her machine, hit Windows key X, go to... Okay, it's, wait a minute. Is just down? Okay. It's just the, it's the system properties control panel. Windows key X and then system... And then she'll say Windows 10. I'll say what version. And blah blah blah. And then in there, it'll say author authorized. S T Y E M. You want to call system what? System properties. S Y S T E M. Okay. Just she can even yeah, just okay. type Windows key. Hit Windows key. Type system. She'll probably get right there on the control panel. Um, oh, and that'll tell you. It'll say Windows is activated. If it says Windows is activated, she owns it. She's done. Windows 10 oh, is hers. Oh, like you. Like and now she can erase the hard drive and use the Windows installer to install a clean copy. The reason it's crashing probably is simply that it's got a mushmash of two different Windows, Windows 7 and Windows 10, and something's conflicting. The other thing to keep in mind is she should go, after she installs Windows 10, she should go to the Dell site for that particular model and download any drivers, motherboard, sound, network, whatever drivers for that model are on there, get the latest ones. Dell offers those for a download. So it says activated, not authorized. Okay, Windows is activated. If you, if you, it'll be obvious if you look at the system properties. It'll say this is Windows 10 Home version number, blah, blah, blah. And it'll say at some point this is activated. That means it's good. It's good to go. She also probably can do it without downloading anything from the f from the system reset and the system preference pane. This is uh, one of the things Microsoft does so well is give you 33 different ways to do anything. <laughs> so it's completely confusing. Uh, chat room is also saying check for a BIOS update. I don't. I'm gonna guess at this point. Saying uh, do a BIOS update is probably not the direction we want to go with this one, kids. I think I think they're barely they're barely going to figure this one out. So let's not make it too complicated. I'm sure your BIOS will be fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. Uh, 88 or get an iPad. You know they're really easy to use. <laughs> they're very secure. <laughs> 80 and stay safe, please. Stay safe, Brad. Stay inside. Take care of yourself. We want you back. 8888. Ask Leo the phone number. I have a fabulous visitor. From Disneyland, coming up. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Why, you may ask, in the year of our Lord 2020, are we playing <laughs> disco? Well, it's for this guy here, this cat right here, Dick D. Bartolo. He's Mad's Maddest Writer and a disco fool. He joins us every week. 
because he's a gizmo wizard, we call him the Gizwiz. Hello, Dickie D from Gizdale. Leo, how are you doing, pal? I'm great. Do you have your mask ready? Uh, you know what? I do. Actually, uh, Dennis is uh, painting a mustache on it as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't, you know. There are people who are making masks that work with face recognition. They basically like what? your picture on the mask, just the bottom half of your face, so that. Oh my. Yeah, I don't know if it works, but it's a, it's creepy as heck. <laughs> oh, my gosh. No, I'm just putting a mustache Mustache should be enough, I think. Yeah, it's enough. It's Dick, enough. Dick lives in uh, the epicenter, sad to say, of the uh, yeah. COVID crisis in the United States. New York City's on Manhattan. What's it like? Let's get a report before you get to your gizmo of the week. Boy, well, the streets are still kind of deserted, uh, but everybody t on Broadway, most everybody's wearing a mask. Good. Good. Uh, in the park, not so much uh, because Central Park tends to be crowded. Not nearly as many people do Riverside Park. Yeah. So it's fairly easy to walk around without a mask. But certainly we carry the mask for Good. if we go anywhere where there's people. In case a stranger uh, pops up out of nowhere. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, Dick, it's always a pleasure to see you. And I'm glad you're healthy and well. And Dennis is healthy and well. And the. Uh, and everybody's doing okay. Uh, and you're just you're just staying in, right? Uh, just staying in. Yeah. You know the marine. You go to the is boat, closed. which is nice. Breaks my heart yeah. that I can't go boating. Oh, you but can't at all. Oh. No, it's closed. They asked the actually the executive for, for a waterfront called up and said, "This is going to break your heart, but can you stay off your boat and not come to the oh. marina?" You've been using, you had been using that as a little bit of a refuge, I know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, every other day, Dennis and I would get a meal and go down there. Oh. So. Well, stay anyway, well. At least you're healthy. Thanks, yeah. yeah, that's exactly. the, that's the and, most and we have we have the backyard, so that yeah. helps. And honestly, you don't want to go out anyway. If you tripped, you fell, you would have to go to the hospital. That'd be no good. No, that's that's the weird thing. You can't don't get, get sick. sick. You can't get sick of any in any way. No. Don't cut yourself. Could, no knives. Just stay stay safe. If I get sick, I'm going to jump on my boat and drive down to the Comfort. You know, they brought in the, the aircraft, the uh, hospital ship. Yeah, with, tw with there's 12 people on it, that one. Yes, yeah. yes. It has a thousand beds. And for some reason, <laughs> there's only 20 people on it. So <laughs> weird. Anyway, uh, is, I don't know. If, is, does Myra come over and visit anymore? Does she come in the studio? No, no, not, no, yeah. not during. She's, not uh, uh, she's uh, in the chat room and she uh, she said she's terrified because... A friend's mother passed away uh, just the other oh day, God. and so she's now. She says, "I'm I'm scared to death." And, and and we shouldn't be terrified, but we should be very cautious. Take care of yourself. Very yeah, very vigilant. Vigilant, yeah. And we're going to get through this with the, everybody pulled together. Hang in there. We're in this together. So Dick usually joins us with a gizmo or a gadget. Uh, I don't imagine they're sending you a bunch of gizmos or gadgets these days. No, but this is something I found at Toy Fair, and it wasn't a toy. And I thought, you know, I'm going to put this aside because I know there's going to be a use for it. So this is for parents of very young kids starting about 18 months to four years when they're trying to teach him to eat. This is a great way for them the parents to give the kids this set. What the heck and is that? They can entertain themselves. It's called constructive eating. So the little bulldozer can push the peas <laughs> or the mashed potatoes onto so the spoon. It's got a bulldozer. It's got a spoon that looks like a truck, a fork it's, that it's, looks it, like a truck. It has a forklift that actually has its own little forklift parking. It's very, <laughs> it's very, it's Folks, very Folks, you got to see this. Go to gizwiz.biz. I'm seeing it because Dick's got Skype. Oh, my goodness. That's hysterical. Gizwiz.biz. Click the... Uh, Gizwiz visits the tech guy button and you can, you can and, see And then this. there's new, for kids who like dinosaurs, there's new dino dining, okay? Oh. So that is, let me just go to this here. So th then you have reptile, knife, fork, and oh, pusher. Oh, I like it. Oh, I, like it. I think kids are going to love that. It's great fun. Dr. Mom's in the chat room. She says, my grandson would love that. He's learning to use a fork and he's obsessed with trucks and he would just flip. Constructive eating, it's called. Is it still for sale? It's still for sale. And and uh, I, I Wait a minute, Dick, lady. whose hands are those? Uh, I, that's my assistant. <laughs> oh, so, I see. I, I, I'm pretty good, aren't I, at this? <laughs> there's three hands in the picture. Yeah. I'm worried. Uh, well, I, I pre-recorded everything. No, okay. I'm not. No, no. By the way, uh, Dick is doing a truck because he does ABC World News now uh, on a regular basis. And, of course, you can't go into the studio even though it's just down the road a piece from you. So you're going to do this uh, via Skype. And they want to see... 
Can it work? Can it work? You got a better yeah, I, setup than ninety percent of the anchors. You look great. Uh, you know, I've been watching, and I, I think you're right. I think you're right. They're and just, I just learning wanted to throw this. In, We've been doing it for uh, years. Oh my gosh! Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, the lady from Constructive Eating sent me an email. She said, "Dick, we can't advertise discounts, but um, if anybody buys anything, put in say uh, stay home fifteen uh, for fifteen percent off oh, anything." Oh, that's nice. So the best thing to do, go to gizwiz.biz. Did you put that code in the uh, website too? Uh, I put it, uh, yeah. It's okay. going to, I don't get anything. It's a, You're going to go right to their website Good. and uh, they'll get the money and stay nice. home 15. Also, it's a little company and they're hurting bad. Yeah. Luck. So you're helping yeah. them out and it's nice exactly. of them to even offer exactly. a, a discount. How much is it? Uh, it's 15%. Oh, the, how much are they? Yeah. Uh, let's see. The utensils are $15. Oh, that's not and bad. And the plates are 19 something. Well worth and it. they're a combo plates. It's a clever idea. Yeah, it's very clever. I love it. Um, constructiveeating.com, is that it? Well, actually, just. That is, that is it. Let's, but let's get Dick some traffic. Go to gizwiz.biz. Click the gizwiz. This is the tech guy button. You'll see it there. While you're there, there's also the What the Heck Is It contest. Chance to win an autographed copy of Mad Magazine. Big button for that. And help a, help a buddy out. Help a fella out. He, Dick has all sorts of mad memorabilia and match game memorabilia because for years he was the lead writer on the match game. And uh, that's all at the website. He's got a great book that he wrote, Good Days and Mad. You get an autographed copy of that if you are a Mad Magazine fan. And who isn't? Uh, the story of the, the, the heyday of Mad Magazine as written by Mad's Maddest Writer. And let's help Dick out. Buy a bunch of stuff. They make great <laughs> gifts. Sanitized before he mails them, I'm sure. Packed with rubber gloves. Dick was a germaphobe <laughs> long before this. <laughs> Dickie D, please stay safe, stay healthy. I am so glad you're doing well. Stay inside. Uh, we love yeah, everybody too, in, 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 in the beautiful Manhattan uh, area. So, uh, and we just, you know, I have to say, this is uh, the whole nation is watching uh, with with sadness and uh, and the sympathy and empathy for our friends in uh, one of my favorite places in the world. So stay safe, Dick. Thank you. And yeah. you too, pal. Thank and you. thanks for everything. Yeah. You're a gentleman. Yeah. Take care. And watch Dick on World News Now. He's uh, he's great on that. They have so much fun. It's more fun, I admit, when he can go into the studio, mess around. <laughs> but uh, uh, still, I think you're going to have fun with that via, via Skype. Thank you so much, Lady Laura, for braving the elements, coming into the studio. Of course, there's nobody there. <laughs> and spinning the discs. Is there anybody living in the music library there? You might want to get them out of there. Sp just spiders, she says. <laughs> Stay safe, Lady Laura. Thanks also to Kim Schaffer, who also braved the outside world to come here. And uh, she's sitting two doors away from me to answer your calls. I appreciate her uh, so much. Stay safe, uh, Kim. Wear that mask. You look you look good in it. Uh, well, not better than without well, now I'm in trouble. And also, thanks to all of you. We really appreciate you listening. We appreciate all your calls. Please do take care of yourself. Take care of all the people around you, too. Don't, don't forget, we all need each other in this time. I'm Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy. Have a great Geek Week. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, TWIT, T-W-I-T. It stands for This Week at Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security and Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And, of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon, This Week in Tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guys show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.